there. Okay, go ahead. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> No believer shall kill another believer unless it is an accident. If one kills a believer by accident, he shall atone by freeing a believing slave and paying a compensation to the victim's family unless they forfeit such a compensation as a charity. If the victim belong to people who are at war with you, though he was a believer, you shall atone by freeing a believing slave if he belong to people with whom you have signed the peace treaty you shall pay the compensation in addition to freeing a believing slave if you cannot find a slave to free you shall atone by fasting two consecutive months in order to redeem by god Sorry, in order to be redeemed yeah. by God. God is Noah, most wise. Anyone who kills a believer on purpose, his retribution is hell, wherein he abides forever. God is angry with him and condemns him and has prepared for him a terrible retribution. O oh, you who believe, if you strike in the cause of God, you shall be absolutely sure. Do not say to one who offers you peace, you are not a believer, seeking the spoils of this world, for God possesses infinite spoils. Remember that you used to be like them, and God blessed you. Therefore, you shall be absolutely sure before you strike. God is fully cognizant of everything you do. Not equal are the sedentary among the believers who are not handicapped and those who strive in the cause of God with their money and their lives. God exalts the strivers with their money and their lives above the sedentary. For both, God promises salvation. But God exalts the strivers over the sedentary with a great recompense. The higher ranks come from him, as well as forgiveness and mercy. God is forgiver, most merciful. Are we done? Yes, and we can read the footnote also. Thank you. Uh, Note for 492. Since slavery does not exist, the offender must atone by fasting two consecutive months. So, no freeing of slaves anymore. That's right. <clears throat> so, you get a priority for comments. Do you have any comments about the verses that you read? Um, just to. Um, and enhanced uh, and enforced God's rule on women who menstruate um, cannot, uh, must still fast. There's no such yeah. thing as uh, not fasting during menstruation because otherwise none of this um, rule can apply yeah. to them because they cannot come fast consecutively for a whole month because of their period. Right. What verse are you tying that to? Uh, Menstruation for when I start. Uh, four ninety-two. Menstruation. I didn't see menstruation over there. Mm. No, you know the 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 verse where what women can't do during menstruation. Oh, that's two two twenty-two. Right. No, it's just okay. the, the rule that um, they say that um, the traditionalists believe that women can't fast and do all these other religious duties when they mention it. I understand. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, a lot of these rules won't be applied to women if that is the case. Mm. And it's just to, uh, you know, enforce the fact that they got it wrong. 
Yeah. But, um, okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other comments you have? Um, modern slaves, can we apply that? No? Yeah, I wanted to comment on that. <clears throat> can I talk about that? Yeah. So there are a lot of people try to talk about this. Uh, this is interesting. So Rashad telling us, look, slavery does not exist. So the only thing you can do now is to, uh, for, by the way, for everyone that joined, peace be upon you. We read from chapter four, verse 92 to 496, plus the footnote. We're in VC1 dash chat. The verses are there with the subheadings and the verses. 492 to 496, welcome back to submission server and the Quran study. <clears throat> if you if you kill uh, a believer by accident, uh, the options at the time were to uh, free a believing slave, a believing slave, and paying a compensation to the victim's family. Or if you cannot find them, it says you have to fast uh, two consecutive months. So then Rashad says, since slavery does not exist, the offender must atone by fasting two, two consecutive months. A lot of people get confused about this. Um, <clears throat> they say, well, right now we have sex slaves, that kind of thing. Like, that's not what the Quran is talking about, okay? The Quran is talking about slavery, <laughs> the people that you can legally buy and sell in an open market. Such a thing doesn't exist in the world anymore, okay? What exists right now is uh, torture, abduction, and kidnapping of people. Human trafficking is not the same as slavery as an institution. It's bad, it's evil, it's abhorrent. But you cannot go to free these people. That's not what the Quran is talking about, okay? So someone says, you well, you know, I find some, uh, you know, sex slaves or prostitutes or whatever. Can I go, like, liberate them to fulfill this verse? No, you can't. This is not applicable. Uh, you know, we don't go to, like, Boko Haram and say, okay, I want to free one of your believing slaves. It doesn't happen. So the institution of slavery has already been abolished. Every All the activities that you see going on are illegal, uh, illicit activities. Illegal, not that it's righteous if it's legal, but legal as in it's recognized by the authorities as a tender, as a, as a legal trade, as property. That does not exist anymore. So uh, what we would have now is just vigilante activity. Therefore, the verse doesn't apply in that way. You can only fast. Uh, two consecutive months, and what is currently being classified as slavery does not fall under the uh, categorization of slavery uh, in the Quran. That's my comment on that. Thanks. Brother Tazlim had a question. He says, peace everyone for verse 494. <coughs> He says, what does strike mean in the present time? Okay. Uh, Lisa, can you mute yourself or whoever's unmuted? Can you mute yourself so we don't hear your notifications? This is all being recorded, by the way. You can listen later on the uh, channel on YouTube, uh, Submission Archives. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the question was, what does strike mean in present time? That's an excellent question. 494 uh, talks about uh, striking the cause of God. I personally believe that striking here, uh, so striking in the present, present time uh, means that you, let's say you lash out against someone or you condemn someone or you, you unjustly criticize someone, right? I think the, the, the same principle applies. So it says, oh, you believe if you strike in the cause of God, you shall be absolutely sure. Do not say to the one who offers you peace, you are not a believer. So I think it applies today. You know, we should not dismiss the believers. It's similar in the verse in the Quran in uh, chapter 6, verse 52. If I can read that verse. Uh, 652. Azmashtan Rajim, Rahim, it says, and do not dismiss those who implored their Lord day and night, devoting themselves to him alone. You are not responsible for their reckoning, nor are you responsible for their, for, nor not responsible for their reckoning, nor are they responsible for your reckoning. If you dismiss them, you will be, you will be a transgressor. So the concept here is we cannot dismiss believers. If someone comes to me, they say, look, I worship God alone and I'm a believer and I come in peace. I'm not allowed to strike them. I'm not allowed to attack them. I'm not allowed to 
be uh, behaving towards them in a dismissive manner. I need to allow them uh, to speak. But unfortunately, we've seen a lot of times uh, recently, uh, recent times, um, this is not a being applied properly. So to answer Brother Kazlim's question, I see submitter, even to me it happened. I go to you know, a particular submitter or submitter community. I say, hey, I come in peace. I'm a believer. I come in peace. And they attack me viciously and they dismiss me anyway. And so I think this is what God's saying. It says you should be absolutely sure. You can't do that. You know, imagine a submitter comes to me. They say, look, I'm a believer and I come in peace. How can I dismiss them? How can I attack them? How can I, you know, uh, go against them in that way? Maybe I can discuss with them a particular idea, but that's not the same as you know, attacking them and dismissing them or excommunicating them. That's not right. That's my opinion on that, Brother Kathleen. Uh, for Robert's point, yes, the word darab is used, but the point is we're talking about the principle behind it, right? That's how I see it. Any comments, please? Four ninety five is a very powerful verse. I wanted to take a moment to talk about that. Chapter four, verse ninety five. Higher ranks for the strivers, not equal, are the sedentary among the believers who are not handicapped, and those who strive in the cause of God with their money and their lives. God exalts the strivers with their money and their lives. Above the sedentary, for both God promises salvation, but God exalts the strivers over the sedentary with a great recompense. We, in my opinion, we should strive, we should be strivers, big strivers, that's a pun. We, we should strive, we should try to be the striver, and then God willing, we'll get whatever credit we get. But we should always aim high. You see? You have to aim high. That's my opinion. And that's what kind of the verse is saying. It's encouraging us to higher ranks. Because God is saying both get salvation. But why would I strive to be a sedentary? Why would I apply for just being a sedentary and then potentially not make it and then fail? I need to ha set higher goals. I need to push myself harder to strive more in the cause of God for the higher rank. And then if I don't at attain that level of striving, if I go below that, I will still be in a good situation. MashaAllah. Can I make a comment after you, Brother Naveed? Please go ahead. Thank you so much. God bless you. Peace be God upon you. God bless you. Just peace be upon you all. Welcome to Submission Server. It's God's gift to us. And I wanted to continue with what Brother Naveed was saying. Higher ranks for the strivers. Um, you know, this chat room, this platform, is that is one mechanism for that striving right mashallah for all of you that are here that are present and those who are normally here to just missing but for those who are on this chat in our own ways brothers and sisters we are striving right when we go on this where we could be doing something else worldly um which is okay but it really doesn't elevate right here we are on this beautiful day or night we're dedicating our time to please God, to glorify God, to support this wonderful chat server that's global. And for me, I'm learning a lot. Really, I'm reeling a lot. And I thought I knew some, but I realized how much I did not know. And this is one form of striving for me. And thank God for it. And thank God for all you submitters, mashallah, for us to come together, form this wonderful gathering to have this Quran study and God willing let's continue this momentous let's just be on this wonderful um, server because to me by God's will I think it's going to explode it's going to take off like a jetliner and what a wonderful thing to be part of it and at the end of it may God be pleased with all of our deeds and actions God bless you all God bless you too can you, can you know one of you hear yeah, me? We can please? hear you. We can hear you, oh, brother. Okay. Did you want to make a comment, please? Okay, it's all right now. And, the and, comment? And, and, 
And God bless you, brother. Can you first introduce yourself? We have many, many new people here. There's like 30 people here right now. Can you introduce yourself for everybody? Okay. Um, my, my name is Ibrahim Wachiko uh, from Africa, to be precise, Nigeria. Um, I'm pleased to meet all of you here. Thank you. God bless you, brother. What a blessing to meet the a brother representative of submission from the continent of Africa. That's amazing. That's such a blessing. This is truly a blessing from God. And honestly, congratulations to everyone. This is the world's largest public Quran study. Can you believe that? The world's largest public Quran study. Consider yourself blessed to be here. Praise God. Go ahead, brother. What's your comment? Okay. Um, uh, concerning the... Um, um, you know, two two months consecutive uh, fasting. Um, I'm just looking at it because the the verse is talking about uh, that's two months, meaning 60, uh, 30, 30 days, right? And so I'm looking at uh, since the month of Ramadan is uh, a whole month, I always view it this way that uh, the whole month shall be 30, not 29. What what is your understanding about this? So the question is, what is the duration of the fasting period? Yeah. Yeah, my understanding looking, is you just good. Yeah, uh, looking at uh, God, you know, giving us a clue here that uh, fasting two months consecutively, which is uh, thirty thirty. Uh, precisely in Surah 58, uh, verse 4, it reads that if you cannot find a slave to free, you shall fast two consecutive months before resuming uh, sexual relations. If you cannot fast, then you shall feed 60 poor people. You see, you shall believe in God and his messenger. These are God's laws. The disbelievers have incurred a painful retribution. So looking at two consecutive months and 60 people, it means for each day of the fasting that you cannot uh, fast, you feed one poor person, meaning uh, two consecutive months is uh, 60 days. So, And uh, I'm looking at a whole month of Ramadan fast is 30. But uh, some uh, people would say, uh, some of the Ramadan fast will be. So, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, it depends on the year and it depends on the month. So, let's say someone's committed uh, this accident and killed a believer. Then, let's say, okay, two months from now, I'm deciding to fast uh, uh, two consecutive months. So, I think that that's actually an interesting question. The question is, do they start at the beginning of the month or do they start any time? I think it. I would. Assume they start at the beginning of a certain month. So let's say they say, okay, in two weeks, the month is starting. I'm, I'm fasting, inshallah, for two consecutive months. So it's possible that 29 days. It's not, not every month is always 30 days. It could be 29 days. So you just fast whatever the month is. So if it's 29 days and then the following month is 30 days, then that's it. Then in that case, it would oh. be uh, 59 days, right? No, I'm looking at... God, you know, being precise, he said 60 poor people, feed 60 poor people. Meaning Which verse must... is that, brother? Which verse is that, brother? Surah 58, verse 4. 58, verse 4. Yeah. But that's talking about uh, estranging the wives, right? Salam alaikum. Yeah. Uh, alaikum salam. That's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. Yes, that one's right. talking about two consecutive months, but it says sixty people. So I think it's just it's just doing the equation. You can do two think, consecutive months, which maybe coincidence. Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. I think that is only just coincidence. I mean, you shouldn't really be too uh, pernickety about the number of days. I mean, a month is a month for whichever you know how many, however many days that God has designated that month for. Um, I mean, in a few years' time, we're going to fast in February, um, some maybe 27 or 28 days. You can't say that we have to fast 30 days in February. That just no, sounds we, ridiculous. We, 
No, are we looking at the English calendar or we are? Uh, no, it's not know. Gregorian calendar. It's Islamic calendar. The Ooh, actually, calendar. That's a, but oh. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Actually, you raised. Wait a minute, brother. You actually raised an interesting point. If I kill a okay. believer on purpose, do I? Fat. I'm sorry, not purpose. <laughs> if I kill a believer on accident. I have to fast. I would just assume that I just fast two consecutive months of the uh, Islamic calendar. So it'd be, you know, uh, Ramadan, you know, whatever month it is. Uh, uh, what are the name of the names of the months? Whatever. Is, hold on. I just no, want to read two of them. Muharram. No, I'm, you see, I am not looking at uh, any. And. Uh, God yeah, says, but I, know, I know what you're getting at because you're always brother, practicing brother, for how many days, 12 months. What, I'm, what, I'm looking at, what I'm looking at is God saying 60, 60 yes. people. That is, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That is just coincidence, don't you think? I mean, if God wants us to fast two consecutive months, meaning 60 days, he would have just said 60 days. Or right. fast thirty days every year. Why? No. no what? Why not? No. Maybe you're not understanding. Right, brother. Here, I, I understand yeah. what you're saying, brother. If I could just say, so if I kill a believer on accident, and I'll say, okay, I want to fast, so I fast. Let's say I'm in Safar. Okay, I'm in the second month Safar, and then I say, okay, I'm gonna fast now for the next two consecutive months. I fast Rabi Awal and Rabi Al Thani. So maybe Rabi Al Wal that year is twenty nine days. And maybe uh, Rabbi Al Thani is thirty days. So I just fast those fifty nine days, but I fast those two consecutive okay. months. I understand what you are saying, but what I'm trying yeah. to say is, okay, um, assuming um, you kill one, uh, somebody kills uh, uh, somebody unintentionally at the middle of a month, or when the month has shifted to maybe the first week. What I, what one should do is just to count that okay today is uh, maybe second of uh, February so I have to start counting sixty days from that second uh, of no, February. No, 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 no. It doesn't so the say that. Of the month. It, it, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. The sixty days is the exchange rate. It's exchange rate. It's like for example, U.S. dollar versus Canadian dollar. If one U.S. dollar is one. Dollar twenty-five. That's just the exchange rate. Here, the, this is the exchange rate. It says two consecutive months. Exchange rate is sixty. Uh, uh, feeding sixty people. It doesn't mean. It doesn't mean yeah. that it's equal. It doesn't mean that it's sixty people means sixty days. Not necessarily. It's just the exchange rate. It's your option. You could do sixty days. It's pretty close to, to or, or feeding sixty. I'm sorry. You could do two consecutive months, or you can choose to feed sixty people. It's kind of close. But it's not exactly equal necessarily. So that's all they're saying. And it's and by the way, this is only for killing a believer by accident. That's the specific condition. Not killing a disbeliever, not killing a believer on purpose, not any of these other options. Only if you kill a believer by accident. That's the only condition. So um, you are saying that uh, uh, two months cannot be sixty people or sixty days. If I understand you clearly, I'm saying it may be or may not be, but that's not the, the it's not the there's not the conversion rate. I'm saying yeah, that but, yeah. not, it depends on whatever the month is. So I was reading the month. I said, you know, Rajab and Shaban. Okay, those two months, maybe this year. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to do fasting consecutively on Rajab and Shaban. Okay, so maybe Rajab is only 29 days. Maybe Shaban is only 29 days. I don't know how the calendars work, but I know it's they alternate. Some years they're 29, some years they're 30. So whatever it is, I just accept it and I just do it. Now I can do that. That's that's and 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 now if if that's my option for if I kill a believer by accident, if I did the estranging of my wife, then I can fast two consecutive months that way, or I can not do that option and just feed 60 people. That's it. That's it. That's the option. That's my understanding. I, I, that's my understanding, but, you know, because some years, except, you know, I don't know what to say. I think it's different. For example, in the Gregorian calendar, September or these months always have the same number of months. The only difference is February, that every four years 
has a leap day. That's it. But all the other, January is 31 days. You know, so they're different. But in Islamic calendar, they just keep, you know, switching. One year is 29, okay. one year is 30, different ones. That's it. May, may God yes. increase for wisdom and knowledge. But my understanding is uh, not just looking at uh, either Muharram or whatever month, uh, just to ca count the, the days until it is precisely. That's what I was thinking about. But Alhamdulillah, we'll continue to explore more uh, of God's uh, you know, knowledge and wisdom. And um, uh, is it Sister Lisa that, you know, uh, talked about uh, uh, menstruation? Uh, I think uh, in one of our study here, I brought about uh, one uh, group that I stumbled on, on Facebook. And the man who was claiming to be a messenger, you know, was, uh, you know, instructed the women in his group not to fast when they are menstruating because uh, he tries to, you know, link um, Surah Baqarah and Surah, uh, oh, they are all in Surah Baqarah, 184 and 184. Um, you know, it says... 228, I think. The other one. No, 222. 222. Surah, two, yeah. Two, 228 as well. Okay. 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 Yeah, but uh, precisely the verses I want to relate with is uh, Surah 2, verse 184, and Surah 2, verse 222. You know, in the verse 184, it says... Uh, Specific days are designated for fasting. If one is ill, that ill that uh, you know is mentioned there. So the yeah. man, yeah, the man took it out of context. And then when it comes to Surah two, verse two, 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 two twenty-two on menstruation, he said uh, because the verse says they ask you about menstruation, say it is harmful. So this ill and harmful, he tries to you know. Uh, See connect. it in the same, yeah, mm -hmm. to connect it and then forbid uh, the woman in his group from, you know, fasting uh, during Ramadan. If you, the but woman I, read is, I mean, uh, some women just suffer with cramps and period pain. So that will yeah. class under ill. Um, but most of us don't. Uh, I've never yeah, had okay. a period Absolutely. pain. I've never Absolutely. been ill. Absolutely. I, this is what I told him. I said, uh, some women may be ill and some may not be, but he said, however it is, any woman that is, you know, menstruating must not fast. So I told him that is his own opinion, not uh, what God has, you know, revealed to us here. Mm. So, mashallah. <coughs> okay. Uh, we had a question from Sister Medina. Medina, do you want to come up and address your question uh, or ask it? She said that she can't speak on voice channel. Oh, okay. Or uh, they, I don't okay. know. I think it's a okay. female. I'm sorry. Yes, she is female. Okay, so she asked a question. Let me try to find it. Uh, let me try to find me it. <clears throat> Meanwhile, um, peace be upon you all. Uh, thank God for this study and this opportunity. Um, I um, just while I'm thinking of it, I plan to be away from the chat. Uh, I wanted to make uh, a few comments. Um, Mashallah, sure some good comments were made regarding the um, 492 and the uh, two consecutive months. Uh, yeah, may God increase our knowledge. I agree that you know God has made it uh, easy just doing two consecutive months rather than um, having to count. 60 days, I think it's a lot easier to say, okay, I'm going to start at the beginning of this month, like it was said, and do it for two consecutive months rather than counting 60 days. And um, so thank God for that. And we want to, you know, we don't want to make things harder uh, than God has made them. Um, and um, regarding um, Mother Tasim's question, you know, I understand 494 as this is uh, in the context of um, 
a war and physical fighting that because it's talking about um do not say to one who offers you peace you're not a believer seeking the spoils of this world for god possesses infinite spoils um so this is referring to the spoils of war and um so i think it's it's talking about that that we don't that we don't aggress that we don't attack um uh in order to you know take over people's land and money and things um at the same time I, you know the the com the other comments that were made based on other verses that those are true that in general god um <clears throat> tells us to not aggress and not dismiss believers and um to be peaceful and so those other things are true it's just this verse i think is referring to um what i mentioned so sister fari yes. just to be clear are you saying that there's no way to gain a lesson here that would be applicable in a broader scenario that is not explicitly related to war um i mean i think that we can i think you know each verse has its has its context and has its meaning and it's good to um it's good to honor that at the same time i think that you know we can say that okay we can use this example and um you know learn from it that we shouldn't um sell our souls for a cheap price i mean that's an ex this is an example of this like people um fighting like you know physical fighting like starting wars or fighting in order to gain spoils that's that's an example of selling your soul for a cheap price and so we shouldn't do that this is an extreme example of that but um we you know we can we can if we wanted to go deeper deeper levels we can learn from this and say okay we don't want to do that at any level like what are the ways that we may do that in our daily lives where for some cheap material gain we are um you know maybe selling your selling our souls is maybe kind of an extreme statement but we are trading we're making a cheap trade what are those ways that we're doing that in our daily lives and and how can we avoid that Thanks. what about the fact that in the very beginning of the verse it says if you strike in the cause of god you shall be absolutely sure i mean would that would that be similar to not condemning someone that you're not fully acquainted with or knowledgeable on i i, I mean that's a lesson i personally gained from it do you, you don't see it that way or I think yeah. it's just talking about something specific. I think so I think the universe no is talking general, about something. I think yeah, it's talking about no something. Well, I think I mean, it's talking about something. Broaden, yeah, we can broaden. Yeah, we can broaden, this, yeah, we can broaden our understanding of this uh, verse, especially as we are studying here in this group. Uh, faith. They come in, some of them are Sunnis, some of them are Christians. If they come here and they offer us peace to discuss peacefully um, today, that one of our brother left, um, I think if we have to strike, he, as a believer, as somebody who believes in the Quran, but uh, even though uh, our understanding differs, so I think uh, brother Jeff, try to you know um tell us uh, remind us that we should be peaceful with people we should we shouldn't just strike them and you know make them feel bad i think we can apply this uh, verse also here yeah that's the study. way i see it that's the way i see it mm. i'm not sure about this concept where we can only look at verses in the context of that particular time or like situation there's lessons in these verses that are applicable to all their lives when god in yeah. the context of the verses of war he says, do not aggress, mm. uh, aggression is condemned. If I say, oh, yeah. well, this verse is clearly talking about war, so I can aggress in other circumstances, we're going to run into trouble. These are lessons that are for us in various aspects of our lives. When God says Absolutely. aggression is condemned, it's not just mm. talking about the physical aggression in that verse. There's a lesson to be learned there that's applicable to v many scenarios in my life in the overall concept of not aggressing towards others. But if I want to look at it in this narrow sense of saying, well, this is... All the aggression in the Quran is only in the context of physical fighting. Then that means I can be aggressive in other ways. Or at least I can say that that's not condemned in the Quran. So we have to be very careful about how we uh, analyze these concepts in the Quran. These are broad concepts that are being shown in different situations. 
but the overall lesson is there for us to learn and apply in our lives in a general manner. That's my understanding. Yeah, so I just want to, I want to clarify. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, God encourages us to read the Quran from cover to cover. And all those ideas that are mentioned, I think, are there. Like, there's a verse that says, you know, when those who believe in our revelations come to you, you shall say, Salam alaikum, peace be upon you. And peace is advocated in, in multiple verses, and aggression and oppression are condemned. And so it's not that these ideas are not there. But I think that when the verse is referring to something specific, I think we, I think it would be good for us to be careful and not make it into other things because we don't want to, um, we want to keep things intact. We want to keep things um, true to like their meaning. At the same time, like I was saying, we can, if we wanted to look at like deeper levels or in our discussion, we can say, okay, you know, this is this example of that God gives of not striking in the cause of God because of seeking materials. And one can say, okay, what can we learn from this for our um, daily lives now if we're not in the midst of, if we're not in the situation? Uh, and me, like one thing that we can learn is um, that, of course, you know, we can talk about it like, okay, it's not good to aggress in general. God, God condemns um, aggression, like we're only allowed to fight in self-defense. God condemns oppression, um, and in general, we don't want to um, we don't want to break God's laws in order to, to gain some cheap material uh, gain. So we can we can kind of look at okay, this is what this verse is saying, and then you know from there we can reflect on okay, how can we apply this content? Like what is you know what can we learn from this, and what can we apply in our daily lives? That can be like a kind of a, you know, discussion uh, that we can have around the verse. At the same time, I think it's important, like when the verse is talking about something specific, to not, you know, alter it and say, oh, it's also saying all these other things, when those things may be said in other verses, but um, uh, this verse is referring to something uh, specific. Um, so anyway... That those are my yeah. thoughts. Jeez. Thanks. Thanks for me. Jeez, I just want to say on. I like that. May I? I just wanted to oh, comment no, on the absolutely ahead. sure part. That was just my focus. I wasn't really focused on the cheap material gains. I was focused on the part that says, um, you know, if you strike, you should be absolutely sure. I just thought the lesson in that is, if you want to condemn anyone, uh, you have to be absolutely sure. That's the lesson I gained from that. I understand the context of the verse is about physical fighting and uh, spoils of war, but I'm saying that. That's a broader lesson to be learned from this verse, and I don't see it explicitly in that way in any other verse. So for me, the lesson is very clear there. I don't see anything wrong with just saying, okay, look, if I'm going to condemn someone or I'm going to dismiss someone, not even dismiss someone, but like have negative thoughts about someone or question someone's faith in that way, I need to be absolutely sure. And so I see this in, in concert with the overall theme of the Quran. Um, that's just my understanding but uh, may God increase my knowledge. Thank you. Go ahead, brothers. I think, uh, it, let's see. You shall be absolutely sure. Boy, that's a really tall order. Uh, especially, so if, if, we're, if, we're con if we're saying that this is, you know, let's, let's say, let's apply it to debate or things like this. Um, you really don't know if the person is maybe stepping out of bounds because they don't like me, because I I've been aggressive or I said something the day before, you you really don't know sometimes, and also sometimes we may not be fighting in the cause of God. Sometimes it might be our ego that we're defending, you know, because we want to make sure our understanding is forwarded. My understanding. You know, so I might want my understanding forwarded, and and if I see this verses, I am judging somebody, and, and I think I'm absolutely absolutely on strike. Yeah, I, I think it's just problematic all over the place uh, because you can't, you you really can't know absolutely, you know, uh, why the person may be uh, angry with you. You know, you you're gonna have to really. Uh, you're taking a risk. That's how I'd see it.
All right, if we can and move more, on to... Oh, it, it, oh go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, we lost you and then I thought you went silent. Um, I wanted to address Medina's question. She's been very patient and waiting for us to address her question. Um, so uh, to address Medina's question, she's asking about the sedentary. She's saying the sedentary are being called out in the Quran um, and some are being condemned. So then how can sedentary be saved? Because of 495, it says God promises salvation for both. So then how are uh, sedentary being condemned? But Medina, the question I have for you is, is there any verse that tells us directly that sedentary go to hell? Do you have any verse? Because I didn't, I wasn't sure about that. Um, so while we're waiting on that, if anyone has any verse. No, but uh, I think it's a relevant question she's asking because I also wanted to raise that point. You know, in Surah 9, God says, do not even pray for such people because it's like they are condemned uh, when they die. And then this verse is saying he promises uh, them salvation. Maybe is it before they die, if they can repent? Yeah, yeah. If they can repent, I think, yeah. Yeah, but, if, they can correct, uh, if they can correct their attitude and, you know, become strong believers, then God promises them salvation. And then but if they die like that as a sedentary, then they, I think they are condemned by God. Um, but wait a minute. Hold on, guys. So, for which one is it? The funeral prayer for okay. That's Surah so, Nine, was eighty eight to yeah. eighty. Oh yeah. Can I huh. can I give a comment on this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just so everyone is clear, we're talking about the verses uh, from nine eighty one and to nine eighty four. So the question is: Are these sedentary all going to hell? Uh, go ahead, um, Erdem, please. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're up. Also, I think one of them is uh, in an uh, actual time of need, and the other one is in is in uh, optional. Like, um, if a person is actually uh, dying of hunger, and you <laughs> you have to give charity, right? Um, so that would be because striving is also like striving is also with money. So you have to give that. But if it's just, you know, um, optional, then it's a different thing. So these two uh, scenarios, I think, are just different. One of them is actually they need the people. They need them to go to war. Uh, and people are dying there. They need their help. Um, I mean, they're not going. But the other ones, I think, is just um, in not, not that much of a need. Because there's so, a certain point, there's a certain point. If you remember, there's a certain point where uh, the Quran actually mentions, you know, from uh, now a, a certain group of people will need to stay behind. Uh, to, yes. Um, yes. To have knowledge so, of the religion, religion, and when the so, others come back, you can mm. you can tell them the knowledge of the religion that you acquired. Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of confused myself. I'm in the same situation as Medina because I'm looking. I'm just trying to look at the full context. Um, verse 73, so 973, it says, you shall be stirred with the disbelievers. All you prophet, strive against the disbelievers and hypocrites. So these are both hypocrites, and it says their destiny is hell. So that's done. Talks about them, it goes on. Uh, 78 talks about the, their conspiracies. Um, and then in 81, the question is, is it talking about different people? Here it says, the sedentary rejoice in their staying behind with a messenger, and haters strive with their money in their lives. So then the next verse, says so in this verse it says that the fire of hell is much hotter okay so maybe this one is the warning to them i don't know then the next verse it says let them laugh a little and cry a lot okay then the next verse it says for you have chosen to be the sedentary in the first place therefore you must stay with the sedentary then 84 says you shall not observe the funeral prayer for any of them when he dies nor shall you stand in his grave they have disbelieved in god as messenger and died in a state of wickedness um, and then yeah. the next verse at the end it says their souls departs as disbelievers. So I'm not I'm not understanding. Is it describing the sedentary in all these verses, or is it describing the disbelievers and hypocrites, and then some sedentary? No, I, I'm no, like, I think it's a valid question. It, I'm not understanding it myself. Thank you. Yeah, no, but yeah, I think it's clear. The verses are you know pretty distinctive. You know, um, there are sedentary who uh, maybe 
uh, stay behind, but the wicked among them who do not, who are strong and are not willing or ready to, to you know, uh, participate in war to help the the prophet fight war. These are the wicked among them that uh, God is condemning, but not all the sedentary. That okay, is okay. This... So you're saying, I see. So you're saying if the prophet invites you to fight, you have to fight. Otherwise, you're a wicked second sedentary because you're not obeying the messenger. Is that what you're saying? Because you're saying in that situation, you have to obey the messenger. He says, let's go fight. And you don't fight, you're going to go to hell because you're disobeying the messenger. There's no way out. Is that what you're saying? But then, uh, but then, uh, then who are, okay, so then you're saying the other verse, 494 or 495, is talking about uh, uh, sedentary in a general sense. It's saying that the general sense, sedentary, they have salvation. But these specific sedentary that are disobeying the messenger, they're going directly to hell. That's one way I think I can reconcile it in my mind. I don't know, does that reconcile it for you, Medina, or no? To me, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah sorry, can you, Brother Nevi, can you say that one more time, the last thing? I was looking at some verses, the last thing you just said, that you, yeah, how you can so, reconcile it. So, the way I reconcile it is I say, the, the sedentary described in, uh, in the verses that I posted, or did, I didn't post them, 484, the, 471 to 484, the sedentary described in those verses are specific sedentary that disobeyed the prophet and refused to fight with the messenger um, when they were called upon versus if we're just going to talk about sedentary in a general sense in 495, it says God promises them salvation. So I think that refusing to obey the messenger at that moment and uh, 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 fighting that guaranteed your hell. And then in 495, if you're sedentary in general sense, not with the messenger, just in an overall sense, you are just sedentary. Um, God says he promises salvation, um, but obviously higher ranks for the strivers, and you're not necessarily going to hell. That's the way I can reconcile it in my mind. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that, I think that, that is, does it. No. Because at that point, you're just you're disregarding the message. You can't do that. That's not submission. You're going to go to hell. Right? Messenger said, let's go. You have to just go. You just have to go with him, right? Yes, like I think I said, you can say no to the messenger. Yes, like I said, one is the uh, obligatory and the other one is optional. Right? I think so I... oh, not, please everyone, go ahead. not everyone is going to be able to strive with their money, for example. Along the same lines, like perhaps like a more general way of saying it. I mean, I agree that, you know, when there's a live messenger, then, you know, we need to obey, like when it comes to religious matters. Um, so that that makes sense. I think perhaps a more general um, way, like the way I've understood it and I understand it is that, um, you know, that was the test for them at that time that they needed to pass. Um, they needed to strive in that way with, you know, uh, it was a very tough situation um, and they needed to support uh, the messenger and fight in the cause of God in that way. That was their test that they needed to pass. Um, <clears throat> for us now, it's like, you know, we know the minimum, um, believe in God, believe in the hereafter, lead a righteous life. And then there's different levels of faith and righteousness and striving and different ranks for that. So we can choose how much we want to strive, uh, what we want to do. And so it's a, um, uh, yeah, different, uh, different situations. And, um, and I think at the same time, like, we also, like, that's true as a general concept. And I think at the same time, we each, like, each person has their, the responsibility varies, like the more God gives us the higher responsibility. And so um, there's different, you know, and we, we each, like our souls are at different places when we come here and what we need and what, what we need to do may be different uh, to purify and nourish our souls. So, yeah, so I think it's important ultimately to follow God's guidance. May God guide me and us to do what we need to do to save our souls and then you know, like I said, different different levels of faith and righteousness with different uh, rewards. Thanks. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you so much for that. 
Oh man, uh, uh, Monica. Monica is trying to speak for a while. Come on up, uh, Monica. Please speak. Hello, hello. Hi, PC can you party. guys hear me? Submission server. Go ahead. I can hear you just fine. Go ahead. Make your comment. What's your comment, please? Go ahead. Okay, so about the gray words, uh, if you look at the uh, verses about the dark gray words, like, uh, you know, the verse that's saying, do not even go there gray when they die, uh, I understand that this verse as for the disbelievers uh, who uh, how, uh, fight with the believers back then. So am I right or am I wrong? I just wanted to ask that. Uh, I, yeah, I'm just saying... Yeah, I think that's the question, right? So the question is, in 81, it says the red and the sedentary rejoice in the staying behind. And then 82 says, let them laugh a little and cry a lot. So who's them there? Would it be the sedentary? I would think it would be the sedentary. Then it says, this is the requital for the sins they have earned. And then uh, and then in the next verse, it says, therefore, you must stay with the sedentary. And then the next verse, it says, don't go to their grave. So I don't know. It sounds like to me that that's the... It sounds like to me that these are sedentary that are disbeliever because of their unwillingness to submit to God and obey the messenger. God said, let's so, go fight. They said, we're not coming. So for every disbeliever or uh, the disbelievers who do not uh, follow the messengers? when no, they, I think it's uh, all when... disbelievers. I think it's all disbelievers. Oh. Yeah, I want to know. I want to comment on I, this. I would like to uh, play. Oh, sure, bro. Uh, sure, bro. Yeah, it's directly related to her question. It's all disbelievers because the whole reason why uh, we can't, or these people can't stay, uh, can't uh, stand at their funeral prayer, it says they have disbelieved in God and his messenger and died in a state of wickedness. So it gives the reason. So that is the over encompassing reason. So anyone who is a disbeliever, you can't do it. And this is just. Uh, one of the things he showed. Yeah, but if you look at uh, the sedentary... We... Okay, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Is anybody interested in having me play what Dr. Khalifa says about 495? I mean, I've got it all queued up if you want to... Yeah, go it. for it. Yeah, go for it quickly. Yeah, sure. Let's give it, let's give it a try. As much as you can. <laughs> We're talking about uh, believers who believe in God, the hereafter, follow the Quran alone, worship God alone, and that's the extent of it. They're good people, they're going to heaven, but they're not of the same rank as far as God is concerned, like the people who, who strive. Thank you. Yeah, right. You have to see your circumstances and how it is working. But uh, the God says, "Let us start with Mujahidun, the Amalim and Muslim, or Saidu. First of all, the Mujahidun and Amalim, or Muslim, or Saidu, and that other. God raises the disciples. I don't, I don't push. I don't think this is coming from the people themselves." Yeah, you want to see too that the, the message is delivered in the best possible and the most effective manner. This is all the case of the circumstances. Again, other than the Sabid of the Hisma or the Medal of the Hassan. Advice to the task of God with wisdom and great diplomacy. Okay. All right, mashallah. Thank you. He doesn't push. I got it in text here. So he says, uh, he, what he says, uh, God raises the strivers, so I don't push. I don't push. I let it, if if it comes from the people themselves, then it goes kind of fuzzy. I don't know what he said. But he said, you better see to it that the message delivered in the best possible manner and most effective manner. Uh, and he says, I guess it all depends on the circumstances. So, mashallah. Thank you very much. Sister Medina, can you come up, please? Uh, yes. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much for all of your answers. Salam alaikum, sister. Thank, yeah, thank you, Navid, for uh, uh, mentioning my comment. Actually, I wanted to add something. Uh, I, and now it's kind of, yeah, it's clear uh, the difference between uh, those two situations since there are nine and four. Uh, I guess I'm, uh, I was concerned more about, like, 
uh, what is because there are so many so many verses in the Quran that uh, tell us about like you know strivers you know getting uh, their guaranteed guidance from God versus sedentary and uh, maybe we can define more maybe we can talk about more about uh, what are uh, what makes someone a striver in our time and what makes someone a sedentary in our time uh, like for example uh, like uh, is going to Quran city. Uh, is that striving or is just a basic, uh, you know, basic thing in submission? Or I, I don't know, maybe like meditating on God. Uh, what kind of things are considered striving? If you can talk about that. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, uh, may I just, may I, go ahead, Jim. brother, just real quick. No, just the second half of this comment that Dr. Khalifa was talking about. He, he says, I don't push. He says, it all depends circumstances he, he, and then he says again invite to the path of god with wisdom and great diplomacy that that was literally the next sentence if i let it play more if you want to do it you don't chase them away and you don't you, you keep the door open if they're not going to believe now you keep the door open for them so it's he was actually reading this in context of inviting to the path of god i think that's important to know Inshallah. Yeah, comment on this real quickly. A brother Akib asked a question. Uh, if uh, if 484, how does it reference all disbelievers? The way I reconcile that is if this is covering disbelievers of the, um, if this is covering, well, first of all, if you go up, the whole conversation is addressing disbelievers and hypocrites, and then it includes the sedentary. So I think that's how you could do that easily. So if you go to 973, it says, oh, you profit, strive against the disbelievers and hypocrites and be certain dealing with them. So the way I understand it, that whole dialogue is talking about disbelievers, hypocrites, and then among those with the uh, sedentary uh, kind of disbelievers. So that's the way I understood that. Yeah, I just want to elaborate on the question a bit. Um, there was an earlier discussion about um, being absolutely sure when you strike so in this context, these are individuals, based on the context of the verse, they once had already approved, they already proved themselves as not being to participate when they needed to participate. So there's like evidence as to why. But when it comes to um, us kind of making it a general rule, outside of this context here, it's kind of hard for me to understand and as a general rule of like, so dying in a state of wickedness, you, you know when the individual died in a state of wickedness. Yeah, so if someone, if, 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 like someone if someone openly tells us they're a disbeliever, I think that's clear. There's no hesitation there. If someone openly professes disbelief, that's clear. If someone, if someone claims they believe, but they openly and explicitly do the opposite, Brazenly, then I think they fall into the hypocrite category. So, I, but, yeah, but I think we, we would need to verify to, these things. We would need we to verify to still, these things. We have to kind of get that information, right? So it's, it's possible Definitely. that somebody could tell us, somebody could tell us, like, I'm just saying, like, it's kind of hard to implement this because it's like, you have to know that person is a disbeliever at the state yes. of their death, right? So to say that, so how, how, can, how can we implement this? Because somebody could say, yeah, I believe in God, but it could be a hypocrite. And you can't really well, tell I don't right? think that, but I don't, admit. yeah, but I don't see this as musical chairs, as in I see Stephen Hawking, he was atheist his whole life, a few weeks before he died, he openly denounced God, and he attacked God in the most vicious way, and then I think, well, maybe in the last two days, he became a, a believer, and then I can stand in his grave. I don't see that. Because if you're using the same art, go, go ahead, you can comment on that, and I can continue. Show no, I, I understand that point, but it says of like this general a general rule of like, okay, we are not supposed to do condolences or funeral prayer for any disbeliever. Is like, well, it's kind of hard for you to even identify somebody as a disbeliever at that moment. Well, I think that's what, the, but we don't need. Well, to. This is explicitly. They, so that's what I was saying in they, the context of this verse. It was explicitly demonstrated well, that these people were saying, opposing the messenger and stuff like that. Yeah, what I'm saying is, but it makes sense openly, in that sense, but in a general sense, if if someone openly professes disbelief, then that's it, right? If someone says, I just don't believe in God, and then they die, it doesn't matter if two weeks have passed. We're not supposed to just assume that they became a believer. And even in this context, I mean, we could potentially use this logic to say, well, we could do funeral prayer for Pharaoh. He died as a true believer. So can I go to Egypt and do funeral prayer for him? Pharaoh died as a true believer. He believed in God. You know, he was not a disbeliever when he died. 
But the problem is that he did not have time to grow his soul, so he he went to hell. He didn't nourish his soul. This is 1090, 1091. The angels replied to him, it's too late. So God and angels acknowledge him being a true believer, but he just died and he's done. So he just falls in the category of disbelievers. So that proves that even if someone on the deathbed, they just suddenly say, oh, I'm a believer. It's not enough. That's my understanding. They're out. Tie that, that back in. Tie that back in with 495. What was your, what was the connection? Uh, 495. Yeah. That's the so, question is regarding strike. He's like. Yeah. No, 495 is regarding the striving. So I think you're talking about 494, right? Oh, 494. Yeah, 494. Yeah, 494 is if someone tell, openly tells me they're a disbeliever, then I can strike. And the way I see strike is condemning them, calling them out, saying they're wrong, you know, bl- bl- saying, look, this person's a disbeliever. I can do that. That's what I was, that was the whole discussion with uh, Sister Fiery is that, that in that broader context of how it can, this verse can be extracted to help uh, 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 guide us in our lives today, that's how I understand it. If someone openly tells me they're a disbeliever or they reject certain things or they think Rashad is a false messenger or this and that, then I can just openly call them out on that. But, yeah. but we hear rumors. Someone says, oh, J- I heard Jeff doesn't believe in Rashad. I heard Jeff doesn't believe in the, the translation, this and that. To me, that's not absolutely sure. I have to come and confirm to you. But mm-hmm. myself, I've suffered this. Someone tells me, yeah, Navi doesn't even believe Rashad was a messenger. It's like, but no one comes to confirm me. Those people are not absolutely sure, but they're striking anyway. That's how I see it. You know, that's not right. Just want, we need to be absolutely sure. Go ahead. But uh, there are, there are, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a sticky kit because the, let me just tell you, this literally happened to me um, like four or five days ago. I was uh, discussing things with a, a couple of friends of mine that they're clients and they're friends and they are, they call themselves atheists and they, they said, well, nobody can know there's a God. And, and I was showing them, you know, trying to, con- I'm trying to show them that they, we do know how, we can prove that. And so we're going on a long conversation. Now, this lady, she had a, a severe migraine all day long. And in fact, while I was talking with them, she was in, she wanted to talk just to get it off her mind to try to talk about something else. But she always talks uh, against uh, re- the religion, any religion for that matter. And but I was talking with them, and then it, it stopped, and I went downstairs, and I was working, and she came downstairs after fighting quote air quotes, and she says, you know. My migraine was going on all day long, but after we talked about God, it stopped. She literally said that. So you, you, we have to really be careful uh, I, when, when we're, you know, when we decide, that you, we don't know what's going on inside. And th- these people actually came from the Soviet Union, so they're just conditioned to be uh, atheists. And you don't know, I don't know how God's working inside them, so I have to be careful. Mashallah, that's uh, thank you for that sharing. I think, um, you know, and that's perhaps that's a reason to be careful that, um, you know, we God advocates peace and we can only, um, you know, as we've talked about, we are not to aggress. And um, God says, disbelievers, like, unless they're attacking or mocking, we can befriend them. So, um, and my understanding is that we want to see people everyone as potential believers. Um, now, if we are being aggressed against, yeah, we can, you know, we don't want to revert from our religion. We want to stand our ground. That's the time to be firm and, and stern. Uh, if people are, you know, um, trying to revert us from our religion or aggressing, oppressing, those kind of situations, we need to figure out, okay, what's the most wise and effective course of action right now? Um, at the same time, um, I think just because someone is, you know, doesn't agree with us or is a disbeliever or we think is a hypocrite. Uh, I mean, God even says, in, in, even in those situations, we don't know the future. God may redeem them. So um, I think that um, we, uh, because, I mean, God, there's multiple verses that God even says, encourages us to respond to evil with good, because that's what brings about, that's what wakes people up. That's what brings about transformation in people. Um, 
So I think we want to uh, be careful about that. I had wanted to uh, respond to a sister early on had made a comment. I thought it was a really good comment about this uh, connection to menstruation. I think it was about four connected to 492 that, you know, 492 talks about fasting two consecutive months. And if women could not, um, could not fast or worship during their menstruation, then they could not carry out these different uh, laws. And I thought that that was a, uh, a good point. Mashallah. So I wanted to, um highlight that regarding Thanks. uh god bless you sorry you god bless you too else? oh just one quick thing um Go brother ahead. jeff what was that you um what you played i don't remember hearing that in the videos that i've seen by dr khalifa i was just wondering where it's that was audio. from it's an audio not a video. And, and where do you guys access those i can i can put it in the chat vc1 dash chat there you go i put it for everybody these are all the audios oh. they're all uh indexed and they're all time stamped through all the various times oh and is it it's going to be it's in the chat but is it elsewhere on the on the site no, too I, or no no I, put I, it... I put the i put the link for the website okay that okay, has thank all you. of them indexed god. uh yeah okay, god bless jeff, you. in the meantime thank god bless you jeff what audio was that what audio number was that uh that is uh, i think it's 22 at about no 21 at about uh 17 minutes 17 I see almost it. 18 minutes almost 18 minutes i see it i see it it says believers who believe in god the hereafter follow the crowd alone and worship god alone but that's the extent of it are good people and go to heaven they're not the same as those who strive that's excellent that's exactly right that's exactly right and that's re relevant to this generation yeah uh i can even link that exact minute i put the link there that's that's right so I think this helps Medina's question and kind of reconciles it for me is that when you were the messenger, he says jump, you just jump. Before I would say you, how high, but honestly, you don't even say how high, you just do it. Just do whatever he tells you, you know? He says, let's go to war with the disbelievers. If you don't, then you're committing a sin. But now it's different. Now it's like, look, if you just lead a righteous life, do all the minimum, exactly what Rashad says. You believe in God, the hereafter, follow the alone, worship God alone, and that's it, then you get saved. That's it. You go to heaven. But the question is now, what is striving now? We don't go to war in this state. And that's what, to answer Medina's question. That's how I see this today. Honestly, we were talking to brothers and sisters. Today, opportunity to strive, there's many ways you can strive. One of which, and I think is very powerful, is throughout the week, you're all welcome to come on here, meet your brothers and sisters in submission, new brothers and sisters that are thirsty for information, come on the daily discussions, and share the information with them. A lot of people here have a lot of knowledge and it's wisdom. And this is striving. If you come out you, to your day, come and you share your knowledge with them. In a different way, mm -hmm. we have the discussions and debates with Sunnis, with Quranists, with different people. Any submitter that comes here and shares our knowledge or expands our knowledge or helps a brother come to submission. We've had people, people on the server converting to submission. Imagine how much you credit you get for participating in that situation, getting credit by God's leave of providing information. I can call out names here of people that other submitters that converted on this platform. They said, because such and such submitter came and they made these comments, it had a profound impact on me and I accepted submission. I embraced submission as a result. So my comment to all of you is this sounds like an amazing opportunity to strive. All of you have so much knowledge. So please join us during the week when there's so many brothers and sisters from all over the world joining and they're thirsty for knowledge. You know, we have so much information. That's the striving today, in my opinion. We don't need to pick up swords. We don't even need to drive anywhere. 24 hours a day, you get on your phone, you come, you join the conversation, you establish conversation, and you share your wisdom and knowledge with brothers and sisters around the world, either other submitters or new people that are coming to submission. There's a public platform. You can talk. In the old days, you had to go to a library, set up a table. You had to do all kinds of things, drive for a while, and then someone walks by. And then you have to ask them, are you interested in submission? Let's talk about the Quran. This night. Here, it's all ready. All the verses are here. Everyone's here. Everyone's coming is already interested. All you have to do is just share you know, the verses with them and tell them the concept. It's amazing. And honestly, God bless all the brothers and sisters that are striving during the week and coming to speak with people about submission, people that are so thirsty for this message and so many people are coming to submission here it's unprecedented praise god uh, any comments I, please i would Go like ahead. to 
please. I think I think Ibrahim was going to say something. Ibrahim, I cut you off at one point. Did you want to say something? No, no, brother. Go ahead, please. Thank you. No, I mean, bef no, no. Before I played the Rashad audio, you were going to say something. Uh, yeah, I can't remember now. Maybe later. I remember. You then, yeah, yeah, right now, you are there, and also Brother Tasleem wants to make a comment. So peace be upon you all, uh, Brother Jeff. You want to talk? Go ahead, talk first, please. Go ahead. Just, uh, just one of one of the things I wanted to say about was striving. Why strive? Well, you know, if I'm going to make it to heaven, why do I strive? You know, I don't know if we all know this, but when we strive, we develop our souls. We grow. It's food, food for the soul. It's one of the ways. And uh, we can be as high as the arch archangels. We can be that as developed. We can be higher than many of the other angels if we do the work. Work if we develop, purify our souls, strive as hard as we can. That's the reason. That's why strive. Mashallah, brother Jeff. Thank God. Now I know why you had to go first. Um, so my my discussion is about striving as well, and and the way I see it, I like to share with my family here. Um, what I've realized for me, striving, is to get out of my comfort zone, right? A lot of us, or myself, have this situation where you become a submitter, you got everything figured out, it's really a nice program, and you just like it. And uh, we're creatures of habit, so once you're doing your usual things, it's all nice and dandy, and it's good. And I'm not saying it's bad, it's wonderful. But we're the, trying to define striving, those who go above the norm and, and demonstrate themselves. And to me is to go into the discomfort zone, to break out of the box and, and to have that feeling and receive that experience. And I will, I will mention a verse that God is actually telling us. Chapter 18, verse 28, God says, force yourself to be with those who worship God alone. Do not turn your, um, I'm paraphrasing, do not turn your faces away from them. So the, the word here is force yourself to be with them. I mean, my way of receiving is don't be convenient too much. God has made life so good for you. Praise be to God. But now demonstrate your worthiness. Demonstrate that you want to strive. And uh, mashallah, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, this chat room is one of those, right? And, and for, for, for some family members or others, the least we can do is just sign up. We don't have to necessarily talk if you don't feel comfortable. God bless, just sign up. Be a member. Add to the flow of this wonderful uh, striving. And for those who want to talk, you talk. But I think this, is, this has been my experience, to go out of my comfort zone to be on this chat, to discover an amazing uh, approach of learning and how the world sees uh, submission. You know, I, I feel like at some point I was just in my own box and everything was good. But then I realized, boy, the world is out there and a lot of people are hungry for the message of God. And when God puts it in front of me, praise be to God, this is my opportunity to strive. God bless you guys. Praise Marshall. God, I wanted to call Marshall. out a couple people. Go ahead, brother. Uh, you want to say something, brother Ibrahim? God say praise be to God. God bless you. And I wanted to call out a few people. Praise God for Sister Sohela. She does so much efforts on here. She holds the Quran studies every morning. When I'm asleep, I wake up and I see there's 5, 10, 12 people in the chat doing Quran study. That's so beautiful. Praise God, Marshall. Sister Sohela. I wanted to thank her for that and all her striving and her patience. And I also wanted to thank Mr. Peace GPS for being so passionate and patient uh, in so many discussions. And she's so eager to share the truth and, and spread submission. Praise God. Uh, Sister Samantha, I also wanted to call her out for her persistence and perseverance. I hope everyone uh, recognizes her for her qualities. She's a, a new submitter. She got the message on this server. And she became a submitter and she's striving so hard and she's working so hard to be a strong submitter. 
um, just other people, Sister Nancy, God bless you for all your striving and your hard work. Uh, and uh, Brother War Thunder, I really appreciate Brother War Thunder, who is always uh, willing to strive in the cause of God. He spreads the message. He's talking to people. He goes on the social media, TikTok platforms, other platforms to spread submission. Because at the end of the day, God's command is done. The question is, do we want to get credit or not? Right? So with 32 years, there's been no activity for spreading God's message. Now we have an opportunity. And this is just amazing to witness. Brother War Thunder is also someone that joined submission um, being on the server. So that's amazing. God bless all of you. And praise God, everyone that's sharing the word of God, talking about God, coming to spread the message. This is so beautiful. Praise God. God bless you too, Brother Navid. I got a, I got a lot of comments. Uh, God bless everyone. God bless you too, uh, Nabi. Now, God um, bless you. And you too, Ibrahim. Now, I have a theory on... Uh, we have this verse with striving in, in the cause of God with your lives. Actually, money comes first with your money and your lives. Okay, we get the money part. Like if you want to wanna print Quran copies, uh, you got to give money for that. And you don't earn any money from it, right? It's not going into your pocket. You don't earn a living from that. So it has to go. That's that's a form of striving with the money. Uh, opening a masjid, same thing. And, and those examples. Um, but then we come to the striving in the cause of God with your lives. Now I have a theory on if striving with your life is only giving your life in war. I'm thinking it might also be spending time of your life trying to spread the message, for example, and uh, going on Discord, for example. What do you guys think? Yeah, there's a verse yeah, on I this, chapter 39. You. Go ahead, Jeff. I'll put the verses in. No, no. I, I, that's fine. Please. Better to hear the Quran. Yeah, chapter 33. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chapter 39, verse 33 to 36. Okay? This is so powerful. I couldn't believe it when I read this. I only read this recently. Or maybe a few months ago. I couldn't believe it. I was so shocked. Quran, the absolute truth. Look what it says. It says, as for those who promote the truth and believe therein, they are the righteous. They will get everything they wish at their Lord, such as the reward for the righteous. God remits their sins and rewards them generously for their good works. So what do we do? We have good works. We're righteous. We believe and we promote the truth. Promoting the truth. If you promote the truth and do these things, you get all your sins turned into credit. You are among the righteous. Wow, that's amazing. Well, here's your opportunity to promote the truth. People are here thirsty. They want to learn about submission. Every day we have discussions, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People are here to learn about submission at all times. So let's promote the truth. And I agree with, with uh, Brother Taslim. But this is amazing. There's so many submitters. I taught, you know, there was a group on Facebook yesterday. I'm not going to say any names. But they were having a Quran study, three or four people, but it was totally closed. No one can join. You can just view it, but you can't, you can't join it. You can't access it. I said, wow, that's not very inclusive. And I said, well, God willing, we will have a Quran study that's open not only to submitters, but the whole world. And here we have the world's largest Quran, public Quran study. Praise God. Anyone on earth can join here and learn about the word of God. This is amazing. World's largest Quran study. And asked was a brother Harris in Dubai. I, he's a very great guy. I highly recommend all you guys meet him. And he was saying, you know, I talked to him. And I said, well, do you know of any place you can just talk to submitters casually on a day-to-day -day basis? He said, no, this is it. There's nowhere else you could just casually. How I casually talk to submitters in Africa or casually talk to submitters in India. And I just learned so much, so many perspectives. I got uh, connected with the submitters in Turkey. And hearing so many perspectives really enhanced my level of submission. Because... The, these verses, some of these verses were provided to me by brothers in Turkey. Had I not spoken to them, maybe God will show them another way. Maybe I wouldn't have heard them. This concept of being connected with your brothers and sisters, connecting with submitters, and when God says he loves when the believers is united, this is truly phenomenal. It's amazing. This is such a blessing. I cannot express how happy I am and how amazed I am to witness God's promise of the truth and to see the submitters are united here. Congratulations to all of you. Praise God. Any questions, please? Comments?
I want to know what Jeff had to say. Uh, Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I, I no, it was, uh, it was pretty much some of the same stuff. Just uh, let's, yeah, we can move on. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, we read the verses from chapter 4, peace be upon everyone who joined after, we read from chapter 4, verse 94, I'm sorry, 92 to 96. Uh, now we are open to discussion, any concepts in the Quran, any topics you want to bring up, any questions you may have, please bring them here so we can discuss them. If you have any questions or concerns, bring them or any Quranic topics. Go ahead, please. You can come up or type your question in BC1-chat or come up and ask your question directly on the voice channel. And we have a brother from Malaysia, Mr. Zainal. Peace be upon you, brother. Good to see you here today. What a pleasure to have you. Salam uh, alaikum, everyone. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, brother. I hope you're feeling well. Yes, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Okay. If you have any questions or anyone else has any questions, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Or any topics that want to be discussed. Go ahead, please. Peace be upon you all. God bless you. What a wonderful gift from God for us to gather and uh, meet our brothers and sisters across the globe. That is, uh, for me, is the greatest gift by God. To use to to our family, our family. God says believers are your family. So every time you find a believer, you have lo find your lost brother or sister, and uh, we strive to God willing, bring by the reminder of the worship of God alone, upholding the Quran, the whole Quran, and nothing but the Quran. So I thank God for all of you. Now, I just had a little a, a question for Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff, you mentioned two recordings of Rashad. Uh, can you uh, also post uh, which verse in the Quran you're addressing regarding those two? I come how it was not, they didn't get it correctly. So if you could just uh, give the verse number and the surah number for those two comments from Quran study of Dr. Khalifa. Thank you so much. Okay, here's the thing uh, on that. Uh, he, I, he's talking about he elevates the strivers in there. And so I think it's 95 to 495 he's talking about. But here's the thing. He recites it in Arabic. So if an Arabic speaker could just listen and tell, confirm that, that would be great. But uh, I, yeah, that, I, the best I can do. Yeah, that's audio 21 at 17 minutes. Anyone can go listen to it. If you want the link, I can give it to you. And then also, I just want to comment. Somebody say, well, why are we listening to what the messenger has to say? You know what? I have comments. Brothers and sisters here have comments. Why not hear God's messenger's uh, comments on a topic? You know, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. That's beautiful. That's a blessing from God and some mercy. Indeed, it's a great blessing from God for a messenger to come our way to take us out of darkness to the light. And he was totally- Praise God. God says why, Surah 519, God says, I sent a messenger after many years without a messenger. Basically exactly. to take us from, far, from darkness to the light. Sister so, Lisa yeah. has a question. Sister Lisa has, has a question. She's been waiting patiently. God bless you. Sister Lisa, please come up and ask your question. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I was right. asking yeah. earlier when we were uh, discussing verse um, 495, uh, can somebody define the meaning of sedentary for me in today's modern world, please? Yeah, I think Rashad defined it in that audio. He said basically sedentary would just be that you believe in God, you believe in the last day, you're God alone, Quran alone, you do the commandments in the basic level, you just fulfill them, and then you don't do anything else. That's it. That's sedentary. All right. So it's only just people who believe on faith and don't. No, strive. it has nothing to do with. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with faith or knowledge. No, 
this is they are they're doing everything that the, just their lip faith service. can be the same as us. No, it's not lip service. They believe correctly. They do believe, but they believe in God. They believe last day. No, they have. They saw the proof. They accept everything, but they just do the the basic practices. They just do the five pillars. They just do the minimum requirements, and that's it. They're just checking in or checking out. That's it. They're not going above and beyond what they're what is required of them. They're saying, "Look, it's like, oh, two point five percent. I'm done. Reading one page a day of Quran. I'm done. Doing five prayers a day. Done. I don't eat pork. Sure. I'm not gonna drink. Sure. Do Friday prayer. Okay. They do. They just check the boxes, and that's it. They're not interested in doing beyond that. That's all they're interested in. So that's these it. people won't make it to heaven. No, they will. Rashad is saying they will. The Quran says they will, but they just don't get a high rank. They're just that's it. They're just they're just worshiping God alone, and that's it. They're not interested uh, in the bigger picture. They're not interested in striving or spreading submission or building a masjid or doing big things or trying to contribute in some way or you know participating. They're not interested in that. They just do these basic things, and that's it. That's a sedentary. Yeah, they they are people who love to sit at home doing little activity when others are there striving harder to you know uh, succeed to make things better for their lives. These people, you know, they are kind of lazy or weak believers, if I can put it this way. Yeah, okay, they're not interested what? in doing anything. And honestly, uh, what's that verse? What is the verse that says they they said that they if we knew how to fight or if there's something we could do or something like that? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I have to find it. Come again. There's uh, he's gonna find a verse. Uh, also, this ties it. This ties in with the concept that the rich believer is better than the poor believer. So, just to explain that concept, if you have two believers. They're, they're the same. Their hearts are exactly the same. But one is striving to become rich so that he can support righteous causes, feed a lot of poor people, uh, build uh, masjids for communities, these kinds of things. This is a type of striving, too. Also, I'd like to say for people that, you know, uh, if if so, if someone's a housewife or uh, they're, they're injured or uh, disabled and they can't uh, – they can't go out and do stuff. You know, educating yourself is striving. Educating yourself and preparing for that one time when somebody asks you that one question and having all the information, that's striving as well. So let's look at this verse that Brother Ibrahim brought. This is so amazing. Wow. wow. So look at 991. Okay. So in 990, they make excuses. You know, and, and to modern day, they say, well, you know, I don't have time or... I don't know how to talk, or I can't do this, or what would I do, or I, this, that, whatever, right? You make excuses. But now look at what the brother put. 990 says the, the Arabs made of excuses. They came to you to seeking permission to stay behind, okay? But now let's look at the next verse. Not to be blamed are those who are weak or ill or do not find anything to offer. So they're searching for something to offer, but they have nothing to offer. So as long as they then remain devoted to God and his messenger, the righteous among them shall not be blamed. God is forgiven most merciful. Now look at the next verse, 992. It says, also excused are those who come to you wishing to be included with you, but you tell them, I do not have anything to carry you on. They turn back with tears in their eyes, genuinely saddened that they could not afford to contribute. They're sad that they, they cannot join. The prophet has a caravan. He's taking 200 people, okay? It has capacity for 200 people. He said, a perfectly healthy person goes, says, I want to fight. I want to join you. I want to be your water boy. I want to give, make you guys meals. I want to do whatever I can to contribute to your guys' struggle. The prophet says, we don't have space. We cannot take you. And the, the person has tears in their eyes. They're saying, I just want to do anything I can to contribute to any way, any way. I just want to help. And the prophet says, he genuinely says, we don't have space. We can't take you. But the eagerness is there. That's what we should be. That's how eager we should be. You know, and so a lot of times, um, for example, I, I can give this example. During the week, we have different debates. 
or with, with people or inviting people to submission and someone say, well, I cannot debate. Look, a lot of times when I'm debating people, if you just load the verse, that's wonderful. Like I'm asking for a verse to load. Just, you can just load a verse. Just load a verse. Someone can contribute any way they can. Just load a verse. Just be here. Just support us. You know, we are just fighting in the cause of God. We're spreading the message. In whatever capacity you can help, just load the verse. Put an article. Put an image. Post a, you know, whatever. In whatever capacity that we can contribute, we have to support each other, right? That's that's kind of how I see it today. You know, in the old those days, they bring them water, bring the soldiers food, whatever. Now you could just bring a verse of the Quran. Remind us of a verse. Imagine how powerful it is. I spend, let's say, someone here spends 20, 30 minutes trying to find a verse, and you know it. You already know that verse. Hey, here, here's the verse. Here, here's the verse of God. Okay, thanks. Wow. Oh, you know, you're, you're, you're helping and you're relieving a burden off a brother or sister's shoulder because they've spent 30 minutes searching for a verse. You already know it. Just give it to them. That's all you have to do. You give them a verse, and that verse can be a life changer for someone else. Imagine that. How amazing that is. I've seen people, they see one verse and it has such a profound impact on them because of the one verse that they saw, they're just, they're in shock and awe. They can't believe it. They're, they're, they want to just submit because they saw the verse. Think about that. That's how powerful it is. A minimum contribution can have a world difference on many, many people. Go ahead. Somebody wants to speak, please. Um, I wanted to mention, Masha, that was a good point um, about, uh, I think it was Brother Jeff that um brought up it's surah 9 verse uh, 122 and this is um goes back to the question about like striving and how can we strive and what's striving um surah 9 122 surah 9 verse 122 when the believers mobilize not all of them shall do so a few from each group shall mobilize by devoting their time to studying the religion thus they can pass the knowledge on to their people when they return that they may remain religiously informed um i think it had i think another brother had brought up this concept as well and um i don't know if this verse was already posted but i think um uh, brother nabi i don't know if you were uh, looking for this verse surah 3 verse 167 um that talks about um come fight in the cause of god and contribute and they said if we knew how to fight we would have joined you so i uh, saw that verse, so I wanted to share it. Thanks. Mashallah, that's a related verse. I was going to think about that verse. I brought that up a couple of days ago. Uh, some people thought, oh, you're, you know, you're using this verse. It might not be the best manner because let's talk about hypocrites. But the concept is the same, right? It says, if we knew how to fight, we would have joined you. But you just said it. Honestly, the verse you read is actually very beautiful because it says some people stay behind to study the religion, to inform the people when they return. That happens. This is really amazing what happens here, actually. We have debates and discussions with different groups of people, but certain people take the information and knowledge from there. They go and do research, and they give us information in the form of articles and research and verses so we can use it next time. That's amazing because they're helping us remain religiously informed. We have our talking points, right? Let's say we have our 10 talking points for submission. But now someone throws a curveball. Someone takes that curveball, goes back to the Quran, does a bunch of research, comes out with an article that we can turn around and use in our discussion. And it's so powerful. It's so amazing. So that's exactly true when different people can fulfill different roles. They can contribute in different ways. And it's just amazing to witness. It's so amazing because you see people, uh, you know, people fulfilling different roles. But someone comes and says, look, however I can contribute, just let me know. Just let me know how I can contribute. I will contribute. Do you want to research this topic for you? Do you want to research, you know, why we worship God alone? Great. That's beautiful. That's great. Sorry, just what's coming to me now, what I was just thinking about is that, you know, we all have different gifts and interests and talents. So may God guide each and every one of us to be able to use that wisely, use our gifts and talents and resources and interests to be able to contribute um, in a way that's um, uh, in a way that's meaningful. Um, praise God. Thanks. If that's, that's very beautiful. And also, I think interconnectability is really important. Because if I spent six months researching, researching a topic that you've also spent a year researching on, if I'm not connected with you, then 
I could have already attained that knowledge through your means and I could be working on something else. So being connected is so important. This is why God emphasized unity. God loves when we are united because we could build off of each other's established information and knowledge, right? If, if think about it like this. If we, if, if, if we, there's a book, it's 100 pages, and we all could go read it on our own 100 pages and come back and talk about it. Or we can assign, you know, two pages to each person, and then we come and we exchange notes, we share knowledge, we can review, go back and forth. Literally, when you collaborate, it's very powerful. It's the same thing with the Quran. When we build off of years of existing knowledge and wisdom from each other, it's so powerful. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how amazing it is. And that's exactly what we see. So it's really important to be connected. That's another reason. You know, the, uh, Rashad tells us about how Yusaluna, it may support the Prophet. In 3356, the, 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 the traditional Muslims, they translate that as sending salawat, right? 3356. He said, this means praise the prophets and blessings, this not. He says, no, the word is Yusaluna, which means support. And the context on, by which it means support, it means connect with, remain in contact, be there for, right? So when God says the believers are united, we are in contact with each other, we're connected with each other, we can strive together, and we grow as a single unit. I didn't understand that until I really, I came to appreciate that when I understood like, wow, you know, I can talk to my brothers and sisters in India. Otherwise, they're like a lost tribe. These people in India, they've been striving for 20, 30 years. They never had connections with any other submitters. And suddenly some information they're telling me, I never heard about it. They've been studying on their own. They're giving me information. I never heard about it. So it's so important to be connected. It's so, unity is so important in submission. This God says he loves the believers when they're united. And it's profound in so many ways. It's support, sharing information, interconnectability, peacefulness. You're more likely, this is another, I'll just end on this. You're more, li you're more likely to be at peace with people that you're connected with, right? And this is economic rule as well. Countries that have strong economic relations with each other almost never go to war with each other, right? That's one form of connectability. Now here I see, you know, if submitters are connected with each other, they're less likely to have conflict because they, they're really connected deeply. They have a good connection with each other they're in contact. They're in constant relations. They're less likely to go at each other's throats or be uh, uh, attacking each other. Whereas if, they're in t if submitters are in total isolation and then they hear bad things or they have bad thoughts or whatever, th this devil can easily dominate them. So operating as one unit, being connected, loving each other as a one true family is essential, in my opinion, is very important in all these various levels of um, uh, degrees of significance. Thank you so much. MashaAllah. I have a comment, Brother Navid. God bless you for all your striving day in and day out. It's amazing, really amazing. Thank God for this platform and every brothers or sisters that we have around the world. Um, our teacher is God and we are holding the one truth. God says be like the bricks in one wall. I think uh, what makes us be uh, uh, like the bricks in one wall is by holding on to the truth that God sent us. Once you understand the truth and we hold up truth then by god's grace we can go forward as you see in the from what I, time i have been here i have learned so much by god's infinite grace and i really can comprehend the the, the message how is global and what i mean i really see getting together with our whole um submission movement as brother navid says um, also, I wanted to thank uh, Brother Navid and Brother War Thunder. Brother War Thunder, mashallah, he's always ready. I mean, he puts up the verses for every statement that is coming out. He's ready. You, you don't even, it doesn't even take him in a minute, less two minutes maximum, one and a half minute. He has it on DC Chat 1, verses from God. 
I mean, we constantly have the backup, the God bless the strivers, Brother Duke, Brother Navid, and our other peaceful mind. Uh, all of us who come here, we are truly blessed. And I thank God, thank God, and praise God. All praises be to God, Lord of the universe, for such an awesome blessing from God. We must be extremely appreciative. Whenever God gives us something as such a great blessing that we have given us here and now, uh, we have to be appreciative. And we have to actually do whatever we can to bring this family together so all of us can taste happiness here, now, and in the hereafter. Because this message is not, uh, is not for the... Uh, just a group of us. It's for the world. This message has come for the world. And we have the purified message, purified pillars of Islam. If we do not act upon it, um, we would be losing a great amount of uh, blessing that God has sent us. All glory be to God, Lord of the universe. Thank you. MashaAllah. God bless you. Brother War Thunder, did you have any comments to share? Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all the people that come here and strive in the way of God, especially Brother Naveed. He's been putting an, uh, an immense amount of time in here, immense effort, which uh, I admire. It's uh, truly um, a gift from God that we have such a good person in here, dedicate most of his time, his daily life, for months and months in here to spread God's message. We should really appreciate everyone in here who comes uh, and dedicate their time and their life and their efforts and even encourage other people to come, right? Just contribute as much as you can. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. God bless you. Praise God. God. In the you. meantime, God bless you. In the meantime, I put the event for next week's Quran study. Please sign up. It makes a big difference to just have everyone sign up for that. Please tap interested. You see a check mark there. It's in BC one dash chat. If you can sign up for that, I appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, another, uh, was there another topic we wanted to talk about? Um, the chronic topic was just someone, Monica, you, you wanted to, you had your question. Do you want to come and uh, ask your question? I know you're making some commotions in the chat. Do you want to say something, Monica? Okay, she said no. Okay. Uh, praise God. Um, so just a quick recap of some stuff we've been talking about. This has really been amazing. The last uh, few days, we've had a lot of deep conversations about a, a variety of topics. I just wanted to fill you guys in. So um, let's see. We've talked about several things as to you know, why, why, why are we, um, what do we have, you know? Well, we have uh, Code 19, we have the, the Quran's ultimate miracle. It's a blessing from God. I think we should not be unappreciative of this. It's very powerful. A lot of times people don't recognize what they have. So with Code 19, this is the massive proof from God. And also we have a clarifying messenger. So a lot of you know, we have a lot of people coming and going, a lot of Quranists, and they're confused. We had a lot of debates about, you know, should we say this, should we say that? What are the practices? What are the rituals? What does Quran say? This and that. And just a lot of confusion. And praise God, praise God for the uh, uh, knowledge that we have received. It's truly a blessing to be able to perform. So Abraham, when Abraham prayed, he didn't ask for health or wealth. He said, make me among those who performs the contact prayers, the worship practices. Now, having the worship practices is a major, major blessing from God. Okay? And I want to let you know, this might sound crazy to you, but we have a lot of people who don't have worship practices, yet they claim to follow uh, Quran alone. So this is important. So we need to emphasize our worship practices, we need to be steadfast in carrying them out. 
And we need to recognize the value and significance of engaging these worship practices and having them as a blessing and as a means of getting closer to God. Does someone want to comment on that? Go ahead, please. Okay. I thought someone I heard I thought I heard someone's voice. If nobody wanted to come out, I just want to continue on that point. So a lot of discussions are going on lately, a lot of people coming to submission. They're asking, Well, what are we supposed to do? We accept, we reject hadith, we worship God alone, we follow God alone, and we worship we, we worship God, we follow the Quran. The question is now what? And really what it comes down to in all your endeavors, for me it's really two options at that point. Is you can either um you can either uh, embrace submission and have a full package doctrine system, and you can embrace all the practices, have all these understandings. We have revelations from God. It's truly a blessing and access the, the Quran for what it really is. Or we can uh, engage in some level of this Quranism ideology where we just kind of make it up as we go. We don't really have any practices or we just kind of make them up. We're not sure what it is, this and that. And right now, the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. And the, and the fastest growing movement within Islam is the Quranist movement. And so as submitters, um, we are very blessed to have uh, the information we have. It's truly a blessing because the Quranist movement, they're, unfortunately, they're, they're, maybe some of them are believers and they're in darkness. And so the question is, how, how can we better articulate God's message in his words uh, to the world? And this is something that came to me. I kind of thought about this a lot. And Brother War Thunder, I know you were in this situation. Maybe this is a topic you can elaborate for us on. Please. Thank you. Yeah, with, um, with Quranism, I think it would be a very good stepping stone to submission nothing beyond that because it can cause a lot of confusion for the people it's a very attractive option because as navi said it's gonna make on the go every few weeks your your understanding changes your you know your belief system changes your practices changes your ritual changes so as a long-term um sort of belief system i don't think it's a very viable option however it would be a very good stepping stone as because they have already rejected Hadith and Sunnah, and all that is left is just accept Code 19 and Rashad. So, yeah, that's just my take on this situation. So, yeah, I think, go ahead, brother. Yeah, please. please. Yeah, um, so many, uh, most of these Quranis do not even know about Rashad. They don't know about Code 19. What they believe is. Just uh, the Quran is enough for them. It's sufficient for, for their belief, not Hadith anymore. So God, um, I think in Surah 10, verse 9, uh, God has said um, he guides the people by virtue of their belief. So I think such people may you know, be blessed by God to uh, uh, be rewarded with uh, his kingdom. You know, there's, I've personally identified three uh, levels of idol worship. I want to just briefly share them with you and anyone shares any thoughts on this. There's three levels of idol worship. The first level of idol worship is a very primitive form of idol worship. Satan is telling people, look, just worship the sun, worship a tree, prostrate to the rock. It's very basic. It's very primitive, right? It's very simple. It's obvious. But people used to do that. Then people move to this more monotheism kind of concept of recognizing there's only one God. So Satan said, okay, these people are not worshiping trees and rocks anymore. Let's do another thing. Let's make them worship the, the messengers and prophets. Yeah. So then Jesus comes and they, they accept Jesus, but then they twist it and then they make Jesus God. And then they worship Jesus. You see? So Satan says, okay, this is a guy. He was a prophet of God. He was a messenger. Now you worship him. You don't need to worship a rock. You worship a man that's claiming to be from God. He is God. Sakhfullah, that's what they claim. So that's another one. And the same with the Muslims. Muhammad came. The Muslims, they say to the Christians, well, you guys are saying Jesus is God. We're not going to say Jesus. We're not going to say Muhammad is God. We're just going to um, meditate on him. 
we're going to praise him. We're going to consider him the best human ever. We're going to send all our peace and blessings to him and focus on him. He's a perfect human, right? So they will, they will try to have a more advanced version of the worship of the messenger. Now, yes. mm -hmm. now we are in a new era where the people are saying, you know what? We're not going to worship rocks. We're not going to worship trees. That's silly. And we're not going to worship Jesus, God. That doesn't make sense. And you know what? We're not even going to send peace and blessings to uh, uh, Muhammad. That doesn't make sense. These hadith are fabricated. These are just, you know, nonsense, this and that. So now Satan has a new problem, but he's already has a solution for it. Now we have the most advanced and sophisticated form of idol worship. And that is the ego. The ego is a very advanced form of idol worship. Because you are not doing what the physical acts of these other people. Now, you can just have a satanic idea, a concept, and you worship your own opinion, you worship your ego, and you're committing idol worship without even, obviously you don't know it. Right? <clears throat> so now you say, I don't worship Jesus, I don't worship the rocks, but I have my personal opinion. So you say, the Kaaba is not in Mecca, it's in Petra. Now you commit a shirk. Because there's a source other than God telling you it's there. Your personal opinion, your ego, which is led by Satan, telling you Pet the Petra is the correct location of the Kaaba. So this is the most sophisticated form of idol worship. Because you think you're following God. You think you're following Quran alone. But in reality, you're uh, uh, attributing uh, false innovations, false doctrines to God. You see? So now this is the this is the issue, situation that we are dealing with. Today's man is a sophisticated man, and now we have to be very careful that we don't fall into this. Extremely careful. This is why God says study the Quran carefully. This is God. This is why God tells us to uh, examine all words and follow the best, because we don't want to be among those who attribute lies to God who. It's a worship our ego and insist on our personal opinion. In the Quran, it tells us, if somebody can load the verses, personal opinion. By the way, anyone wants to search Quran, you just type flash search, and then you put, uh, you put the verse, the, the, the key term you want to put in there. So I just put it for personal opinion. The two verses came up, okay? 6119, okay? He says, why should you not eat from that upon which God's name has been mentioned? He has detailed for you what is prohibited for you unless you are forced. Indeed, many people mislead others with their personal opinions. Without knowledge, your Lord is fully aware of the transgressors. Also, Brother Ibrahim put the verse in 25, 43, and 44. The ego as a God. Have you seen the one? whose God is his own ego, will you be his advocate? Do you think that most of them hear or understand? They are just like animals. No, they are far worse. Worse than animals. And it's interesting, I looked at the notes. Thank you so much, Brother Farouk. I looked in the notes and the index. This verse falls under personal opinion. Isn't that interesting? Rashad indexes that as personal opinion. And also, uh, 3826 says, Oh, David, we have made you a ruler on earth. Therefore, you shall judge among the people on earth, people equitably and do not follow your personal opinion, lest it diverts you from the way of God. So it's really important to make sure that we are constantly reevaluating. And this is where something Rashad talks about. He talks about this concept of putting our belief system on trial regularly. Put yourself on trial. Somebody says, okay, you're an idol worshiper. Oh, you, you do this, you do that. He says, okay, consider what they're saying and examine yourself. We only get stronger from re-evaluating our positions and ex re-examining our belief system. Brother Ibrahim put another verse, 45.23, common form of idolatry, the ego as a god. Have you noted the one whose god is his own ego? Consequently, God sends him astray despite his knowledge, sealing his hearing and his mind, and places a veil on his eyes. Who can guide him after such a decision by God? 
Will you not take heed? This is very important. We're not talking about people that are not intelligent or not uh, knowledgeable. Some of the people are among the most knowledgeable, but actually their high IQ or high level of knowledge is part of why they become arrogant. You see? And so here, God says, if you are worshiping your ego, God sends you astray despite your knowledge. So they have knowledge. They have all the required knowledge. This, in spite of their knowledge, they could just send it straight. And their hearing is blocked. Their hearing is blocked and their mind is blocked and their eyes cannot see. This is a divine, this is divine intervention. This means divine. God has prevented it, has blocked it. There's nothing we can do. You see? And so we have to make sure we never fall into that. We have to examine our words and follow the best. We have to consider perspectives and consider that we can be wrong. That's very important because if we are, if we do that, there's two outcomes. Either we are wrong, we reform and get a better position, or we are right and we refine or we uh, uh, strengthen our position and learn more about it. That's what I say about that. Go ahead. What do you like to say, brother? Please go ahead. Peace, Steve Honey. Sorry, what were we talking about? I was disconnected for a second. Yeah, we're just talking about just very briefly, just three levels of idol worship. So the first basic level is physical idol worship. Like oh, yeah, got and it. Stones and trees. One. The what, next one is like messengers and prophets. Mm -hmm. And then the highest level of idol worship, mm -hmm. most sophisticated, is worshiping yeah. your ego and personal opinion. If you yeah. have comments on that, I'd love to hear it. Thank yeah, you. I mean, I, I see it a lot. It's, it's just something that's ingrained in every single human being. And that's why we're here on Earth. We're supposed to kill our ego. Do not worship our own opinions. And I think that's a very difficult test for a lot of people, even for submitters. Um, the, we, we got the Quran alone right now, and we believe Rashad is a messenger. But then you have, in a lot of cases, to kill your ego and accept that, okay, I have an understanding of this verse, but Rashad, he's a messenger of God, and he has an understanding. I'm going to take his understanding. My opinion is really irrelevant in this case. This is the same thing with what God wants us to do. It's a total submission. That's what submission is all about. It's not about you submitting to what you think is right, but actually submitting to what is the actual truth without you even um, believing in that sort of concept, right? So it's very important um, that we, we, we're we very aware of this. I think uh, it's a very dangerous thing because we see a lot of submitters uh, get into the area of Quranism uh, because they disagree with the messenger on certain topics and they don't accept it, right? So me, myself, I, I didn't understand certain topics myself when I first became a submitter. I didn't understand that Salad was five times. I understood it to be three times. I didn't understand Khalifa on earth. However, I accepted whatever he told me. I accept it. And that's the point. You have to kill your ego. It's irrelevant what you think. It's irrelevant what you think. What is important is what God and his messenger are telling you. That's, uh, that's just my take on this uh, case. Yeah, yeah. Just adding, mashallah, good points. Just adding on to that, by the way. We read all these verses here. Uh, you know, when we follow the messenger's opinion, it's not like we follow a human either. It's because uh, the, the opinion is guided by God. And we have, we have a verse on this. 2850, it says, If they fail to respond to you, then know that they follow only their own opinions. Who is farther astray than those who follow their own opinions without guidance from God? God does not guide such wicked people. So we see God is equating guidance with following the messenger's opinions. Because uh, God is powerful enough to guide his messenger and his opinions. I mean, it's not really a very hard concept to think that God is omnipotent. You know, a way that was made it very, very easy for me to express some... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody's speaking, please. Go ahead. Did you want to say something, Brother Ibrahim? No, no, Brother. Okay. The way that make it easy for me very simple is look there's information from god that's it we don't even need to focus on any person it's not about any person any information from god is to be obeyed that's it 
to me, when I got that contact, it, it was over. Because I'm just here to obey God. That's it. You know, I'm not here to obey any man. I'm here to obey God. And so if anyone is expressing God's information to me, then great. You know, I just want to obey God, inshallah. And so I agree with Brother War Thunder that we just have to kill our ego, you know. But unfortunately, we see so many people, they just get stuck in this negativity of just opposing anything you share to them. We're saying, look, just examine the evidence. Look at what God is saying. Here's an ultimate miracle. Check it out. Here's what the verses of God are saying. Check them out. And before you even finish the verse or even explain, finish your sentence and say, nope, this is wrong. This, or reject it. We don't, not interested. I'm not going to look at it. That's to your own detriment if you do that. But God, I think the, only the sincere are here. That's why submitters are such beautiful people. They're such amazing people because they are the sincere. The sincere person will consider the truth. The insincere person will not consider the truth. You see? And this shows in various aspects of their lives. We must be sincere. God says the only way. We were talking about this a few days ago. This is very fascinating. If you know Arabic, it cannot help you. If you know English, it cannot help you. If you have money, it cannot help you. If you have a high education, it cannot help you. There is only one condition for coming to God and having the correct understanding. There's one condition, sincerity. That's it. Nothing else. God says the requirement for understanding the Quran is the sincerity. Nothing else can help you. The only thing that can help you is sincerity. That's the only tool you have. So use it wisely. Let's be sincere. It's the only thing we can do is be sincere. And if we are sincere, God promises us. He promises us to give us access to his message. That's it. It's just sincerity. That's all we need. We talk about all these various topics and go into details of this and that. And that's great. We can talk about it. It's good for knowledge. good for deeper understanding. But at the end of the day, the only criteria by which we can access God's message is sincerity. We must be sincere. Our heart must be open. And this is the example God gives in the Quran. He says, can someone blow the verse about um, your chest is straightened when you, when you, I get it, inshallah. What is that? Does someone know, does someone know that verse? Hold on. When you climb towards the sky. There, I got it. Six six one twenty five. How's much time, James? Look at this verse. It says whomever God wills to guide, He renders His chest wide open to submission. That's the sincerity is having your chest wide open, and whomever He wills to send astray, okay, He renders His chest intolerant and straitened, like one who climbs towards the sky. God thus places a curse upon those who refuse to believe. So when you when you, uh, uh, when you are sincere, your chest is open. You see? Your chest is open. That's so powerful. It's so powerful. Because when you are sincere, you're open to the truth and God will place it into your heart. But if you're not sincere, you do not get access. You do not receive the truth. Brother Taslim asked a question. He says, peace. How do you find sincerity? What does the Quran, t- what does Quran teach us about is That's my understanding is you have to have a pure heart. You have to be open. It says uh, the righteous are those who examine all words and follow the best. You're open. Your heart is open. You're ready for the message. You are ready to examine being wrong. You're willing to be wrong. These are all, in my mind, signs of sincerity. That's how I understand it from the verses. If anyone, I don't know, Brother Taslim, if that's acceptable answer to you. But if you're not satisfied, go ahead and add or someone else add. But that's the way I understand it. It's just you, you, you're you really seeking the truth and you're open. And you don't care. I think that's what War Thunder was saying. You don't care what the truth is. A lot of people, they have a vested interest to oppose the truth. Say, if the truth differs from what I hold, I don't want it. I don't want that kind of truth. But a true, sincere person is going to accept the truth no matter what. They just want the truth. Even if it goes against their interests even if it, 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 it apparently hurts them, they think it hurts them, 
or it's disincentivized, the true sincere person says, whatever the truth is, I want it. I just want to access it. That's it. Now, and I'm willing to look, take this, consider anything to access the truth. Go ahead, brother, please. We do have one more thing. Wait, whose turn, whose turn was it? Whoever wants to speak. I don't know, brother Abraham, want to speak. If not, you can talk. Brother Kathleen. Uh, no. Okay. I wanted to comment also on the uh, sincerity thing. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, obviously, you need sincerity to have guidance. Um, but look at this verse. It's also a very interesting one. It says, You shall rule uh, among them in revelation, in accordance with God's revelations to you. Do not follow their wishes and be rather set to avert you from God's revelations to you, son. If they turn away, then know that God wills to punish them for some of their sins. Indeed, many people are wicked. So we we do have a certain group of people turning away because God wills to punish them for some of their sins. Imagine that. So we have guided people, right? They're guided. They're on the right path. But they have some of their sins and God wishes to punish them. And so they turn away. They're not guided anymore. So they're basically not sincere anymore. This is such a interesting thing, you know. It makes you wonder if, if a person, like if a believer sins willingly, if that is insincerity. And, it, and, and for, some, for some sins, apparently God, for some people, um, wills that they divert because of their sins. My solar brother, <clears throat> if I can add to that, good topic as well. And thank you, brother. Navid. Um, so this is really powerful to me and to us as submitters, because that's the virtue of our guidance, right? Uh, for a submitter to be a submitter, you have that qualification. Somewhere along, all of us have this sincerity that, have, that has guided us. And we are aware of and, and conscious of the purpose of our existence. When we read the Quran, I posted it, only the sincere can grasp it, right? So here is a hidden treasure, an amazing revelation from the Most High, serious narration, none can grasp it except the sincere. I think to me, um, a good example from the Quran is Prophet Abraham, right? And the messenger in the subtitle says it beautifully. He said, was Abraham so smart as to discover God, or was it that God knew of his servant and blessed him with awareness and the quality that he has? So therefore, Abraham came to God wholeheartedly, right? He was all in with his kindness, with his sincerity. And by that virtue, God blessed him. Blessed him in this world and awareness of the hereafter. And rewards him, of course, in the heaven. But look at how God blesses one who becomes and, and has that level of sincerity. He protects him. He never became an idol worshiper grants him two sons that are prophets, his grandchildren, some are prophets, and his great-grandchildren, some are prophets, right? That's a lot. So I, I think at the end of the day, to me, the knowledge that God has given us individually is to focus us to God and make us more sincere. That's what knowledge does. It's supposed to further humble me, further ground me so that I can appreciate God and his awesomeness. That's why in, many times in the Quran we see it says about every knowledgeable, there's one even more knowledgeable, more, more knowledgeable, meaning that knowledge is just there and it can elevate and it can elevate to a point where God is the ultimate knowledge of all of it. But it really has no end to it. God's words are infinite in wisdom. And we can only attain it to the level that God wants us to attain it. 
But that level that God gives us knowledge, it is there for the purpose of us discovering God, appreciating Him, and becoming more sincere and wholehearted. That's what I think. God bless you guys. Brother, I put a verse, 4917, peace be upon you. Thank you so much. 4917, it says, who is doing whom a favor? They act as if they are doing you a favor by embracing submission. Say, you are not doing me any favors by embracing submission. God is the one who is doing you a great favor by guiding you to the faith. And what does the last sentence say? If you are sincere, the only way to get to God, to get to his message, to get to submission is sincerity. That's it. It says God is the one who is doing you a great favor by guiding you to the faith. If you are sincere, that's the condition is sincerity. If you're not sincere, you're not coming. You're not going to get it. You must be sincere. MashaAllah, brother. It's a requirement. Go ahead, brother. No, no, well said, and I love that verse. I love all the Quran, but that verse really sticks out there, right? It, it really grounds me because when I'm on Discord or in a Quran study or somewhere and, and I'm talking about it, I don't want to get this position that I have this knowledge and therefore, you know, I attain this um, recognition. It really, to me, doesn't mean that. It means that I have this knowledge I have more responsibility and how I communicate with others plays a greater role to me, right? It's like God has given me this amazing tool, a powerful tool. What am I going to do with it? Abuse it or use it wisely and do it in a way that pleases God. So to me, this knowledge that God has given me and mashallah but on this chat form that I'm in, I inshallah, I'm using it in a way that's pleasing to God, and I'm using it wisely with wisdom so that it reminds me of the verse, remind with kind enlightenment, right? That's how we draw people. As submitters, we radiate. We radiate God's message. And, and by that virtue, God, you know, or, or the people are drawn to it. You know, what is it about this individual that's unique, that I'm attracted to? They're not attracted to us. They're attracted to God's message. And how we convey it is really important to me. But thank you for that verse, Brother David. God bless you. Inshallah. God bless you too, bro. Thank you, what was just discussed uh, is so fantastically detailed for this, I mean, for our life here. I believe nobody can worship God the way he should be worshipped unless he knows who God is. And knowing who God is, is wisdom. Once we really, uh, once we, we don't, we lose that understanding that God is holding seven universes in the palm of his hand, and we are nothing more than a sand, uh, our whole life changes. We can, you cannot worship if you don't know who God is. There's no way. That's why they say he sent his son to die. He wants to help us. He can. We have to suffer here. <laughs> Every single where you go, they're all saying we, 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 God can't. Or they say, for example, the most miserable countries in the world, they t ask you, why you guys are praying to God, aren't you? Well, why God doesn't support you? They say, oh, no, 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 no. It's the foreign policy. This is the countries that are doing this to us. Basically, they don't even understand. When God supports you, not can... Excuse me. When God supports you, none can defeat you. This is very important. So we get really um, gain wisdom. If we don't know the majesty of God, we cannot understand this. And once you look at this whole world, everybody has a bit of the truth. And everybody without any benefit of a doubt say, they give you a promise here, 
but eventually you're supposed to suffer in this world and then in the other world you will have happiness which is the farthest thing from the truth according to god alone god says i am the one uh, that makes you cry i'm the one who makes you laugh i'm the one who makes you poor I'm the one who makes you rich. Not a leaf, not a leaf falls off a tree without God's knowledge. Just try to, I doesn't, I mean, I cannot imagine it. It's just too much. Every leaf. Every this leaf. Is, this huh. is who God is. This is who God is. And for, if God says, if I support you, none can defeat you. And if I abandon you, who can rescue you? If we know that, then we, we will kill all of our idols. We get rid of all the idols. Because it's just, you're talking about master of the universe. Oh, His, majesty. His majesty is so great so great and his blessing on us has been so great had he didn't want to give us another chance he right now all of us would be in hell mm. this, yeah. this, God, God, this is the this is the gift and the last last chance opportunity i don't like chance opportunity to make it to paradise once we die there ain't no coming back so our life has to be this, as everyone was saying earlier. Our focus has to be on pleasing God, packing our bags of righteousness. Because when we die, we leave our body and we have to go. No, we don't take nothing with us. Only our righteous deeds or bad deeds. And we have to live off this um, cargo, let's say it. For a lifetime, no, for eternity, eternity. This is all praise be to God, Lord of the universe. Once we know who God is, all idols go away. Praise God, glory be to God, Lord of the universe. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Mashallah, peace to be as good comment. God bless you. And Brother Abraham, such a blessing to have you um, in this server. Um, I don't know, your, your sound is so soothing and warm. And I appreciate that and thank God for you. Thank Mashallah. you. God bless you more, brother. Just, just thinking about, I'm looking at the list of Mashallah, family members in this chat, you know, we have people from Africa, Europe, Canada, United States, I think somewhere in Malaysia, Allahu Akbar. I think it's a Allah blessing, Allah. you guys, you know, and this is striving, right? We have somebody from Iran, Tehran, Iran. Oh, wow. oh, yes, yes. Peace Turkey, be upon you, Brother Sherwin. Wow, Canada, Washington. United Kingdom. Wow, I've never seen anything like this before. Come on, Praise guys, God. Navid, Navid, War Thunder. We need more Iranians, man. The Iranians are busy protesting on the streets right now. We got a powerful Turkish community, brother Erdem, mashallah. <clears throat> yeah, I live in Europe, but uh, I have connections with. Turkish community, they're very, uh, yeah, they're very powerful. Mashallah. Peace be upon our sister Fari, and um, inshallah, I don't know if she's back, but peace be upon you and your beautiful journey. God bless you, sister. Now she's striving, you guys. Mashallah. mashallah. God bless you, brother. Kathleen, Sister PCPS, and everyone, um, praise God. Yeah, I am actually, I am back. I was thinking about speaking to it, but um, 
Uh, I wasn't sure. Please go ahead. We'd love to uh, hear about this. Please. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah uh, if you're okay with it, we would love to hear it. SubhanAllah. Yeah, it was an amazing journey. Praise be to God. So many. Just, I felt like it was so rich. Like every, just so many, so many lessons, so much wisdom. And um, it was brought up, you know, that, you know, some people are saying that the cab, the real Kaaba is not in Mecca, it's somewhere else. And I was just thinking that, you know, it was really striking when I got there and I, I felt the space. It just felt like a very, and probably others who have been there have experienced this, that it just felt like a very sacred and special space and just extraordinary, just beyond um, superhuman um, energy. Like one just felt like this is something out of this world. And um, by God's grace, you know, any like fear and anxiety, any worry, any, all of that was just, was just gone. Uh, I mean, by God's grace, like mm, brothers and sisters with their, like God had reassured me through brothers and sisters. And um, so there wasn't much of that, but whatever was there um, was gone. And um, yeah, I was just, uh, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to say, but um, I'll just say that it was, um, it was amazing journey and just experiences that I had really, um, you know, sister peace GPS was saying like, if God supports you, none can defeat you. And if he abandons you, who else can support you there? I just really felt that how, you know, there were situations where, uh, God was just teaching me, like, just trust. I got your back. Just trust. All you need is me. All you have is me. And, um, and trust. And then just seeing how God came through and, you know, saved the situation, how God provided the signs. Um, this very moving experience as well, you know, hearing... I um, got to my hotel room, and, and after a while, it was, um, uh, uh, God blessed me that I was able to see the haram. I was very close uh, to the haram, and I could see it, and then I heard the first azan, and it was just so moving. Um, and uh, praise be to God, the whole experience, seeing the Kaaba, you know, the first times, getting that glance, seeing the Kaaba, and... Um, yeah, just amazing, amazing journey experience. So I'll, I'll uh, pause sure. there so that it doesn't. Um, yeah, that's. Um, um, I have that's a question wrong. about that. So obviously, I believe this is a divine. This is God's house. This is a divine process. It's a journey. So, did you? Do you? What kind of feeling do you get from that uh, encounter? either the initial encounter or the whole experience, the whole process. What did it, how did it affect you in that moment? And then how did it affect you as you're going through that process? And now afterwards, how it has affected you. If you can elaborate on those, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, you know, it was very moving. Like it just um, moving in a way that, I just, I felt my soul was really um, moved, uh, feeling, like feeling God's support and seeing his signs, like throughout the whole process. Um, and it was like, when I decided to go, or I was thinking about going, and it was like the doors were all opening. And then the signs throughout, and then getting there, feeling that space, also feeling like the, the unity, the sisterhood, the brotherhood. Um, and then there were just moments where my soul was just incredibly moved and I was just like in tears and crying because I just, I felt like, you know, when the truth, there's, there's moments and times when the truth hits you and one is just moved to tears and one knows that this is something beyond um, this world and beyond, you know, superhuman. This is something um, 
ab- extraordinary. Um, so there were moments, there were moments like that, a lot of moments like that. Um, and just feeling, you know, through the process, I think seeing the signs, um, feeling God's presence more, feeling the closeness to God more, and then experiencing the things that, um, and there's just so much wisdom in the rites, in, you know, everybody's trying to be in Ihram, and I think that contributes to the sense of, like, peace and the sacredness to the, of the space, uh, and just so much wisdom in the whole process, the rites, that when one experiences, when one sees that, when one experiences that, it's incredibly moving. And um, yeah, coming back, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember and um, trying to like reflect and review and remember the lessons and the wisdom and uh, may God help me to apply it in my life and, and benefit from it and trying to hold on to that um, a feeling of closeness to God and uh, the lessons. MashaAllah. Thanks for okay. asking and yeah. listening. And I really appreciate God, and I also really appreciate um, how God provided for me, including through our brothers and sisters, Brother Teslim, Sister Peace GPS, and others who um, shared, gave their input, and shared their experiences and tips, and including on this um, forum before I left. Uh, Brother Mike, his words of wisdom to trust. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sister, what year did you, you know, visit, uh, went for Hajj pilgrimage? What year was that? She just uh, th- went this a few days ago. She just uh, went yeah. a few days ago, brother. Yeah, I just got back. Just, I just got back a few she days just, ago. Oh, she just oh, did a few days ago. So that was my question. So how... How my question is that's truly amazing. So praise God, that's really wonderful. I just for the record, I've not done Hajj. So if I had enough time, I would have came on this time, but it didn't. That was God's will. So inshallah, next year I will be able to go. But my question is, how has it impacted you as a believer? Meaning, a lot of people say, okay, I go, and now I'm just, I'm in a different, uh, elevated kind of feeling when it comes to submission. How do you, did it? Has it impacted you in that way? Are you feeling that you more more must be more righteous now, or how how has that impacted you in terms of your sense of submission and devotion to God? If you could expand on that, I'd love to hear. Yeah, that's a good question. So I do feel, you know, I do feel like I me, mean, it's um like anytime I think we strive and we nourish our soul, we get that there is that high, that spiritual high. And I think this is this is the very special one because we're fulfilling um, this right, and there's so much wisdom in it that you know it's a training. It's a training for our soul. Like beforehand, we're preparing for it, and then we go. We're trying to be in a state of ihram, and I think it kind of becomes a training for us. So I do feel that elevated uh, state. And I also feel like it um, put a lot of things in perspective and how God showed me, like, even in these situations that can be potentially um, very scary, that all you need to do is submit and trust and, um, and I, will, I will carry you through. I will provide for you uh, and I will protect you. And, um, yeah, just feeling the presence of God more, the closeness to God more. Um, I feel like there's like a clarity that comes, um, in terms of what's important in terms of like the blessings to appreciate, like seeing how people there we're really blessed to like be able to go to the, uh, slaughterhouse. And then we were blessed to like distribute the meat like from our slaughter to people and 
seeing how people are so desperate for food and there was just so much, so much in the, in this journey that, um, it helps me to really like appreciate, like puts things in perspective, helps me to be appreciative of my blessings and, um, a clarity of like, what's really important, um, to appreciate the guidance, to appreciate what we've been given, the, the pure message, the pure, um, practices, you know, like being there and seeing like, how much harder, you know, people are making it in terms of the ablution, the salat, the practices, and how God has blessed us to know what the true submission is about. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. Um, and I think that, I think mm-hmm. in summary, like, um, I think that there is a spiritual high that comes with it, a closeness to God and appreciation of the blessings and um, the wisdom in the rites, the wisdom in the Quran, the wisdom in the path, and um, a desire to hold on to that and apply uh, that wisdom and, and um, those lessons that were there for me individually and, and in general um, in my life to hopefully be able to do better. Uh, and there is an increased sense of responsibility. May God help me to answer to that. Uh, I hope sister, that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, praise God. That really answered my question. I really appreciate it. Did you go to Saudi uh, for Hajj pilgrimage alone as a submitter, or you went in the company of some other submitters? And by God's grace, there were a few. Um, I went with a few other submitters, and. Um, so that was a blessing. That was a blessing to yeah. have both the, Absolutely. you know, the group and the group experience as well as the one-on-one time with yeah. God there individually. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I was also fortunate to be there in 2008, 2009, uh, Hajj pilgrimage. I went with my wife and then a uh, company of submitters from other states. So we met there and we went practicing everything together. Inshallah. It was a wonderful experience also. Mashallah. Thank so God. you had an increased level of uh, feeling of responsibility? Um, I, I do I'm, feel... I'm, not I'm not for Not for First, Fari, maybe first Fari can answer, and then maybe Ibrahim you can answer. Is that okay? Is that okay? I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like with any, like with any blessing, that it, you know, it increases our responsibility. So I feel like now that God has, you know, shown me and like shown me the things that He's shown me, taught me the things that He's taught me, that I need to. Um, I need to try to uphold it. I need to try to apply it. Um, that's, that's, that's so amazing. Yeah. I had a question for you, sister. Uh, did you feel comfortable and adequate in carrying out all that we believe to be part of the process of the rituals of and the rites of Hajj? Um, God, I think God blessed us to be able to do it all. Um, I feel like, and may God, may God accept, and he did, you know, he did give us a lot of, like, signs um, along the way. So hopefully, hopefully it's a sign that he, hopefully he's, a, I, I pray that God accepts from me and us. Um, I feel like I could have done better. Um, in some parts, especially, um, and so, um, at the same time, I feel like God blessed us to be able to, uh, to do, um, at least what seems to me like the, uh, the major rights. Um, yeah, so, um. 
yeah, there were a couple of parts that I, I wasn't sure whether, you know, it was supposed to be, uh, like, for instance, it says that, you know, on the first morning at Mina to offer the sacrifice. And um, that's what, you know, that's what we had planned. And but then things kind of, um, there were, the timing kind of uh, didn't go exactly as expected. And we got to the slaughterhouse and in the morning we were, you know, picking out our, <laughs> our animals for the sacrifice. And, but then by the time, and the process took longer than, than uh, we had expected, but by the time the sacrifice actually occurred, it was the afternoon. So again, I don't know if that was something that is, had to be like the whole process had to be finished by the morning. So there were things like that, but I think, I think that, you know, I also remember submitters sharing, like, you know, you do the best that you can. Um, and, um, and that's what you can do. So not to say that, you know, I mean, now if I were to do it again, I would try to kind of, um, leave a, a more of a buffer. Uh, room for things especially there you know things can kind of take longer or things are you know it's a it's kind of a specific situation and not everything is kind of it's it's different it's a kind of a little bit of a different world um and so I think I would try to kind of do better with my part or see you know see if one can kind of plan ahead a little bit better in some ways and um uh yeah, at the same time, I feel like we're really blessed that we were able to do, like, you know, did the, I did the Omra a couple of times, and um, the first time I was just kind of trying to figure out what was what, and the second time I felt really good about it. And then um, we had our day in Arafat, by God's grace. We got there before dawn, and we were there, you know, prayed sunset, and then went to Mustalafa, and then went to Mena, and then, you know, we had... We had more than two days in Mena and then went back and did the tawaf and and then, you know, cut cut a strand of my hair and um came out of my haram clothes. So I feel like thank God we're able to do it seem you know, it seems to me like we're able to kind of hit the major things. Um so like God accepts. Did, uh, did you did you visit the Prophet's uh, mosque in Medina? No, no, thank God we didn't. We didn't put him at ten hour. We didn't do that. She cannot do that. Everybody no, but she did that. She... <laughs> no, no, no. I went. I went. You know, I went um, just to see what they do there. I went. I entered. You know, into uh, where the tomb, uh, you know, was, and I saw the way they were doing things. You know. Uh, that is one of uh, the places, uh, you know, I had to glorify God, you know, for blessing me with the guidance, not to yeah. be an idol worshiper. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, some wonderful experience uh, when I went for this uh, heart pilgrimage. Um, though though um, some of these uh, submitters from Nigeria uh, went for the heart and we did some practices together, um, but uh, we came from different states. We met there. We have our different uh, hotels, you know. And in my room, I was the only submitter in my room. All others, uh, you know, these uh, these believers. So they were watching because right from Nigeria here before we left, they knew that uh, I uh, I am a submitter and what I preach to them uh, is uh, something different from what they do. So when we went to Saudi, they were, you know, expecting me, just like other, you know, uh, Muslims, you know, if they go to Saudi Arabia for Hajj pilgrimage, they unite and do almost everything together, in spite of being uh, uh, of, differ from, uh, of different sex. But the moment they, you know, uh, go to Hajj for the pilgrimage, you see them doing em almost everything together. But they were shocked. They were shocked to their bone marrow that they saw me doing, you know, doing my things differently. So I was going to, you know, places with them, but I pray alone. 
I did everything that I had to do as a submitter differently from what they, you know they were doing. Um, we had um, after the you know a pilgrimage before we came back to Nigeria, we had series of debates with them in because they they knew about Rashad. One of them knew about Rashad. He read the you know he knew about the miracle of nineteen, but uh, he was so you know arrogant because he went in the company of his in-laws and he was trying to challenge uh, Rashad. So I was able to put them where they belong. You know, I challenged them seriously. And when we came back to Nigeria, they went uh, to tell, you know, my wife's family that this is what I did or this is what we did. I am my wife. So they tried to create, uh, you know, confusion for me, but I stood my ground. You know, I had to, you know, challenge them. And I said, if anybody have, you know, a better understanding from what the Quran has, you know, taught us, they should come forward. In fact, they brought, you know, some scholars uh, to me. I finished them. I silenced all of them. So it was uh, a really, you know, a good experience, you know. Um, I was blessed because um, one of the submitters that, you know, came with us to Saudi. Uh, you know, he's a regular. You know, uh, he you know always go to the Hajj almost every year because he's an official of the uh, you know the cabinets that you know always you know uh, go to Hajj with you know some of the uh, pilgrims there. So almost every year. He is there. So he's familiar with all the rites. And to the grace of God, to the glory of God, when we went, we didn't find it difficult, you know, observing almost all, all the rites of, you know, the, the Hajj. So this was my experience, truly. Uh, yeah, I had a... Uh, but does someone want to say something? Go ahead, Brother Zaino. Yeah, I just want to tell you about my experience with the Hajj and uh, with during my 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 pilgrimage. I went with my wife, so I'm the only, as far as I know, I'm, we are, these are the two submitters that I know. Uh, we don't know anybody else who are submitters, but um, you find some very odd things there. For instance, you pray you pray with the Imam, and. Uh, when he recites the al fatiha he doesn't he doesn't recite uh, bismillahir rahmanir rahim he just went straight to alhamdulillahir rabbil alamin <laughs> that's are, what they do yeah yeah <laughs> you cannot follow them this is the problem uh, no, no. i didn't so, follow them yeah i did it I, in the first is, it haram, with them. is it haram to pray with them i thought it's haram yeah. it's prohibited we cannot do of that course it is. you you are following them then you are following them we, no, cannot, we, cannot, we, cannot pray. we cannot pray with we them. Pray That's with idol them. worship. Yeah. We cannot pray with them. Yeah. I, we didn't pray with them. We didn't pray so, with them. What, what yeah. happened was the, the very first day when we, we arrived, uh, we had to pray in the hotel because, you know, we, uh, where, 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 I, where we stayed, uh, I was given a suite, so that's very nice. But... Um, there was a TV set, so we, you know, they were praying. Then I was following, following the, the their prayers, and then the Imam, the first time the Imam recited the Fatiha, he was, he didn't recite the Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I, maybe I didn't hear. <laughs> so I, wait, I, I waited for the second Rakaan. The same thing. <laughs> Then I realized, then I told my wife, hey, we are not going to follow this guy. No way we're going to follow him. No way. Oh, my God. Yeah, and, and these are the things that we have as a submitter. You have to be very strict with this, you know. It yes, matter, absolutely. You know, absolutely. So when, after they operate, then we go in and pray ourselves, by ourselves. It doesn't matter. And you see, when, when yeah. then we decide the right things. You follow him. Yeah. Millions of people follow the Imam. Everybody is, you know. They yeah. just follow and they say the Amin after the Fatiha, all the nonsense, you know. You hear all this. 
this is this is part of my yeah. experience. At least my experience in, in during the Hajj, you know. Well, well, well I, we didn't we didn't pray with them. When we went, um, we allowed them to finish their prayer. But then we yeah. go into the mosque to pray. Yeah. That was yeah, exactly what we did. Yeah, pray on our own. Yeah, you have to be you if you are if you are a submitter and you are a believer in God alone. Mm. Believe in what in in the instruction that God has given to you. You have to be strict with that. You know. Absolutely, and, and and you know uh, when I when I when we visited the uh, when we did the pilgrimage, you know the you know the grounds of the grounds of the of the uh, of the Masjid Al Haram, you know they have electronic billboards that uh, show shows uh, the, the prints out of uh, hadith, hadith sayings of. Of whoever, Muslim of uh, Bukhari, in the grounds of uh, uh, in the grounds of uh, of uh, the Masjid. Al-Hara? Yeah, you see this and you say, "Mashallah, what are they doing?" You know. But these are the things. Yeah, if you have to, you have to go there and you experience it, and you know that there's a lot of things that you cannot follow them. You do your yeah. do whatever mm -hmm. you have to do. Absolutely. Read and the then there's something, yeah. Read there is something I, there is something I observed in uh, Masjid Al Haram. You know, uh, it it what I saw was just the name of Allah. They didn't place Muhammad, you know, uh, yeah. side by side. You know, in yeah. all the places I visited in Masjid Al Haram, it is only God's name that you will see. You didn't see Muhammad's name next to God, just like they do in yeah. our mosque here. You know, when you see Allah's name, you see Muhammad next to him. They didn't do that in Masjid al Haram. But when I went to Medina, I saw Muhammad's name written everywhere. You see the pure, you know, idol worship. When when we when we visited Medina, I I just walk around, walk in walk around the inside the masjid, but I never pray in there. You know. I never pray. I never. I don't see even the tomb of Muhammad. I pray. No, outside. I went. I went there. I went. I went with my camera. I was snapping everything. Then one of these, uh, some of these, uh, their security, Arab security, you know, they don't like it. So some of them, you know, one of them came to tell me, "Hey, we don't allow that. We don't allow." He wanted to collect my camera. I said, "No, you can't take it." So I held back my camera. I, I think I still have some of the pictures that I snapped there. Since 2008, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, you experience a lot of things, you know. You know yeah. It's, uh, it's very, well, it's enlightening. You see you see the masses yeah. of non-believers, you know. It, yeah. it, I, well, you can call them non-believers. because They are non-believers. They are non-believers. Yeah, not not yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lemmings, you know, you know, lemmings. When you are lemmings, they are just lemmings, you know. They just follow without thinking, you know. They even mm -hmm. have any mm -hmm. sense of, of thought. So, yeah. I I don't know whether they they do read the Quran. This is the problem. No, they they read the Quran. They read the Quran. Arab, but they don't. Uh, yeah, brother Ibrahim. I understand. Yes, if you are Arab speaking, yes, of course you can. You probably can. Uh, read the Quran, probably understand number one, but yeah. majority of them are non Arab speaking, you know. They can yeah. read the Quran. I, I can I can assure you, they can read the Quran, but you ask them, do you understand what you're, what you're reading? No. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm very serious about this, you know. Non, I'm talking about non Arabs. Muslims. Yes, I understand you. I understand you. Yeah. yeah. It's sad. Mm. They don't even try to understand. They don't even try. Brother, to even the Arabs don't know what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any idea. But I want to say, I think that we should not, we cannot go to uh, the Medina. I think we should not go there. At least no, not during the Hajj pilgrimage. If we want to go separately at a different time as a tourist, yeah, we can do that. But as a Hajj, program i don't think we should go to no Medina. no going there going there is not a problem 
The problem is if you go and observe what they do, that is the problem. But Rashad because, says uh, don't go there. He, Rashad says just no. don't even go close there. Don't no. go there at all. Well, yeah, what I'm saying, even if you go, you see, uh, like uh, uh, the pilgrim, uh, the pilgrims from my country, what they do, they force everybody to go there. They force Agreed. everybody to go there. Yes, yes. absolutely. Same they force the everybody to go there. So it's going the there, thing. going there yeah. is not sinful if you don't observe. Uh, what they do, they kind of, they I don't worship them. But why would we there. even go there? Why would we go there at all? Why would we even go no, there? Uh, it, it, um, Navid, Navid, let me tell you what, what some of the problems that we have. Why we have, why we are, why we are required to go there. For instance, in Malaysia, if you, you know, there is a government controlled uh, body that only the Saudi government will issue visas for pilgrimage through this government body, okay? If you go, if you, want right. to go to the, if you want to go to the Hajj on your own, the Saudi government will not, as a Malaysian, the Saudi government will not issue you a visa to do the Hajj. You have to go through this government body. And this government body does a package. One of them is to, you have to go through, you have to follow them to go to Medina. No. You have to no. What no. if you no. say you don't want to? What if you say, okay, I don't no. want to go? You cannot to tell there. them, you cannot tell no. them, brother. You can't tell them. It, it's their, you know, uh, one of their uh, rules and regulations that you must go to. Because, in, in fact, this is from, this is what, from what, Malaysia. No, listen, from Malaysia. Listen, even from, yeah. even from Nigeria, even from Nigeria. They buy, they collect your ticket, they everything. When yeah, they bought you, when they, they when you are in the plane, they, when they are yeah. when you are boarded in the plane, first of, first first and foremost, they had to go to Medina first. They have to go to Medina even before coming back to uh, to Mecca for you to observe all this thing. It is only when you go late to Mecca then you must go because they go on, they will leave you behind. They will leave you no, behind they, if you don't follow them. The thing uh, in Malaysia you know, is you can hold your passports, you know? It's a control they, system. It's a control yeah, system. Passes, from the the they will have no choice but to follow. Yeah, you know, follow I mean, but don't yeah, follow but don't observe their you know yeah, rituals. Observe, that's all. Yeah. Does somebody wanted to talk? Go ahead. Yeah, I just yeah, you know, I don't know, it may be different from like different parts of the world, but I know that um that uh, I was told that, you know, the, the rules have changed, like, um, the, so we, like, now one can go from, like, at least from U.S. and Canada, um, one can go with, like, a, um, a tourist visa and do um, Umrah as a part of that um, tourist visa. So, so like, um, yeah, so that's, that's a possibility that um, one can, you know, basically just to put out the idea, again, I don't know if it applies in other parts of the world, but um, now, like from U.S. and Canada, one can go to Saudi with a tourist visa and do Umrah as a part of that. Um, they allow that. And um, so it seems like things are changing and opening up. Like um, we were a group of women, like going by ourselves, like, you know, a few of us women just going by ourselves. But but yeah, it may be different for different parts of the world. But I also the other thing I wanted to say is that yeah, by God's grace, submitters had told me about that. I think Brother Taslim had had um, mentioned um, about them. You know, like when they do the Fatah, they skip the first. Um, they skip the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and uh, submitters had talked to me about that. So um, what I found was a good time. Like they do the azan and then after azan, there, there's a little time before they go into their prayers. So that's a good time for us to do our prayer so that we can do it, you know, like the right way. Um, and then, um, before they get into their <laughs> prayers. So I just wanted to mention just, that. Yes. Yes. As you do not follow the, the imam, then it's okay. Do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. We do it on our own. Yes, you don't follow them. That's right. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's a waste of time. You know, you do, you follow them. What you know? Yeah, God doesn't accept your heart. <laughs> Absolutely, that's right. 
You know, everything they do there is just idol worship, nothing more. Nothing more. From their, no, from, their from their ablution to prayers to recitation to everything there, you know, it's just opposite of what God wants you to do. So exactly. definitely you cannot follow them. You cannot. You cannot follow them. Uh, for those for those of us who have not who have yet to go uh, to visit uh, to do the pilgrimage, uh, follow the instruction in the Quran. You can never go wrong. Is what I right. did. Exactly right. what the Quran right. tells you what to do. Follow that. Mm -hmm. Anything right. else, uh, do not follow. Simple. Mm -hmm. So, inshallah, I will go next year. Um, wow. That's uh, for me. That's very powerful. I can only imagine what it would be uh, for the sister. We have people that were, were deciding to do Hajj in Petra, and different things. And so, <laughs> to comment on that, like you're saying, I just don't think God would make it so difficult for me to have to figure out where to the location of the Hajj. It doesn't make sense to me. The religion is not difficult. So when they are spending months or years debating on location of Hajj, to me that shows me that fundamentally the entire approach of such a way, of such a mechanism must be wrong. You know, it has to be wrong because the Quran says you have to go to Arafah, you have to go to Muzdalifah, you've got to go to Mina. Are there, are there places like this in, in, in Petra, Muzdalifah? Mina. They claim there is. Yeah, they just start making uh, stuff up. Oh, 